Today's episode of the Nate Land Podcast is brought to you by Viore, Electric E-Bikes, Helix Sleep, and Grand Canyon University. Hello, folks, and hey, Bear. Welcome to the Nate Land Podcast. I'm Nate Bear. Get to you, Brian Bates, Aaron Weber, right. Dusty Slate. All right. All right. Uh, <laughs> we're back. So it's the the kid's birthday. Oh yeah. oh yeah, happy yeah. birthday! Thanks, man. Yeah, you are the kid of this. I know. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Now I'm 32. I'm yeah. not a kid by any metric anymore. It's kind of wore off. Did you get that uh, <laughs> starter jacket for your birthday? I did. My wife got me this. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Big coat. It's not quite the weather <laughs> for it yet, but it does feel it's very comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is comfortable. It hides a lot. I'd imagine that's what. I mean, I would like it for that reason, just because you're. I'm less vulnerable in it. Yeah. Yeah. You do. I like. I like being zipped up. Uh, always have been, and I see like that's very, you know, just big. You don't know what's going on there. You know. <laughs> When I was growing up, a starter yeah. jacket was a cool cover for not having cool clothes every day. Like oh, the starter jacket wow. itself was cool, so you didn't have to have cool clothes. You just wear the starter jacket all day. Mm -hmm. Could have been shirtless underneath it. Could have been, Who yeah. Who knows? Yeah. You put a lot of stuff in this pocket. Oh, yeah. yeah. All kinds put of Put some remember. snacks in there. You got snacks in there right now? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. A little pouch. <laughs> He's got loose Oreo cookies in there. And I just... mean, I look at those old videos <laughs> when we started it. You would have filled that starter jacket, but yeah, right now yeah. you look good. Hey, now. thanks, yeah. dude. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a good year, dude. It's going to yeah. be a good year. 30, 33rd year. Uh, it's like it's it's what Jesus said. The end of the year. Yeah. No, yeah, of me. This is, so you're 33 now? I'm 32. Two. So yeah. this is my 33rd year. Oh, that's, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Is that how y'all do your birthdays in the Weber household? Get real technical with it. Yeah, real technical. It's like, say, a 19th century for yeah, 1800s, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same kind of thing. Yeah. Your dad's birthday was yesterday. Yep. And I realized that he and I are closer in age than Aaron and I. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. Think wild. about it. We think a lot about that stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, it gets brought up pretty quick on this yeah, podcast. Yeah. So <laughs> just thought I'd go ahead and get ahead of it. Uh, yeah. My dad's 68. I saw y'all yeah. brought a cake out for his birthday in Vegas. Yeah, it was fun. We had, uh, uh, I mean, we have, uh, we have a whole video of other stuff. I guess we're, we should, but I mean, it was, the whole thing was like, all right, we're, we're going to bring the cake out. I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to bring everybody back on stage for an encore or just not an encore, but just come out and everybody wave. And, uh, I told every, you know, we had, we told everybody, we didn't tell Nick cause Nick is Nick's pretty tough to keep things under the wraps. He'll, you know, he started knowing towards the end and then he gets, he'll just, <laughs> it looks like you go, well, what's going on? Cause he won't say, and he's like, well, what? And my dad's like asking him stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and we had to tell him cause you know, we kept it from him until the last point we could. And then he's like eating and then, <laughs> you know, and he's just looking at my dad like, Hmm. hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and so then I'm on stage and, uh, I, I'm like, all right, I'm going to do it. And so I finish up and then I say, all right, Hey, we're going to bring everybody out. Uh, so everybody come on back out. Nobody's coming out nobody this has been planned for two days yeah nobody's coming out and then i was like well where is everybody you know you, you know and everybody's standing up clapping the yeah. show's over yeah. like he's feeling comfortable and then uh finally i see nick and i go oh nick's coming out i was like all right everybody take your time just a live show nothing to worry about <laughs> and then you know then my joe and my dad i mean they were all backstage as if the show ended three hours ago no urgency at all no urgency at all <laughs> Nick was eating a big steak. I think, and they Travis uh, gave all like you know had a, they they got a ten minute warning, being like, "Hey, mm -hmm. it, we're close, yeah, so be ready." And just, I mean, they all, and then so then, and then Travis brought the cake out as a surprise, and then all the crowd we sang happy birthday. So it was very That's cool. Fun. That's yeah. very cool. Yeah. So you do something nice, you still get you're up there frustrated. Like, what are we doing? Come on, everybody! Like, I'm just gonna stay in there. And then so, but it was, uh, yeah, it was super cool, super cool. So yeah, we had a good. Vegas was good. Vegas was a fun time. And before that, you presented the CMAs. I did. Yeah, the CMAs were, uh, you know, very fun. I I followed Tanya Tucker 
Yeah, I lost a bet because of that. Oh, really? What Brian and I were watching it in the Zany's green room. We were betting on when you would go up. Yeah, I won 20 bucks off of that. Oh, really? I, Brian was like, I think Nate's coming right up after the commercial break. And I was like, nah. I mean, it was a very, this guy's got, maybe you have a gambling problem or just a lot of money to throw around because it was very, I was just. Well, obviously, look at his jacket. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was, you know, I never could, I never, my parent, we could never afford to start a starter jacket. I got the other. This is my first ever one, too. Yeah. I got, because uh, it's probably looked down on when the Weber fan, you know. Well, it's like, that's what the poor kids I, wore. I had two. <laughs> And I grew up in a trailer park. That's where people's priorities are at when you live in a yeah, trailer park. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, that's the difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're like... What kept us out of the trailer park is <laughs> yeah, we at yeah. least chose milk over starter yeah, jackets. You didn't have dinner that night. Yeah, but you yeah. Had that j- I had two. <laughs> two I had two. Of, I was yeah. like, yeah. Miami Dolphins and Auburn. Auburn, I was like, it was big time. Yeah, I, big I, time. I had uh, whatever the other... There was another one that was not a starter jacket. I had a lot Stopper? of... Stopper? Huh? Stopper? Stop jacket. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was... Uh, I forget. I forget too. I was trying to think. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about though? Yeah. There was I had some Jordans too from Dollar General that they they made Dollar General made Jordan uh, a pair of Jordan shoes that looked like real <laughs> they looked like uh-huh. Jordan shoes, but they were Dollar General. <laughs> DGs. Yeah. <laughs> That's worse. They were, though. They were Michael Jordan's brothers. <laughs> and they go, you go, well, he was, you know, he's they said he's the best one. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In my school, if you got caught wearing the fake Jordans. People were ruthless to you, dude. Yeah, it's worse to have the fake. A kid showed up with it was the Jordan Jumpman, but you could see shoelaces on the Jordan logo, and dude, they tore this kid apart for yeah. that. That's, that was in Montgomery. That's nice. What do you mean? Was that in that's Montgomery? Nice yeah, did yeah. That. yeah, that's cool. I wasn't yeah. doing it. I didn't have Jordans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to be doing that down in Montgomery. You don't yeah. want no fake Jordans in Montgomery. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But I don't have a gambling problem, Brian. I won the bet. It's we were, only a problem when you lose, right? Yeah. We were sitting in the green room wa- watching the CMAs, waiting yeah. for you. And I, and I just casually, it's a commercial, Brian. I just casually say, I bet I bet Nate's next. And Aaron just jumps on it. And he's like, you want to bet? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I, he said, I think they'll do another musical performance when they come back. Oh, wow. And he's like, you want to bet? Yeah. And I'm like, okay, sure. And I thought he'd be like, you know buy me a whatever next time 20 bucks yeah i'm like oh he just put me on there i, I like, want it to mean something all right who, yeah who won male vocalist of the year uh it was your category right yeah it was uh, uh chris stapleton from the- oh, okay all right well that makes yeah. sense i was chris gonna Stapleton say- seems like i don't i mean i n- have no interaction with him except what you saw on stage oh yeah and it doesn't seem like that's it's the i don't i don't know him personally uh-huh but it's, I mean, there's, he, he never, I don't think he, he didn't look at me, uh-huh. yeah. which I thought was crazy. You know, you're like, <clears throat> I would think you would just look someone, I'm not putting my hand out and I'm, and thankfully he even shook it. I yeah. didn't. And I, and now I would just not even like, if I gave him an award, I would just mm-hmm. stand back and just be like, let him like that dude is. I became a fan that night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, Good for you, buddy. Yeah. Well, Chris Stapleton's all, his music's awesome. Obviously, we like it. But we were talking about what a Nashville moment it would be if Jelly Roll had won, and then yeah, you yeah. hand the you know Jelly Roll would have would have given you a hug probably. For sure. Oh, you know? for sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I honestly was hoping it would be Jelly Roll. Uh, it would have been yeah, it would have been a very special kind uh-huh. of thing. It's it, I you know. I I, I re- he's he's a wonderful person, man. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, he is a nice Jelly guy. Roll's a really wonderful person. He's one of them that you're like, yeah, he's a, he's rough around the edges and all the stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's that guy uh, has worked very hard, and it's you know, and he gave that great speech, and it's all very relatable. Just in the fact that yeah, it takes a long time, and you know, you got to just be around and. You know, I relate to it, and you—you you know, it's not like because you see people that are famous, and you're like, they're 26 years old, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and they're and they're millionaires, uh-huh. and it's just, and it's they, and it, you're like, they haven't even, and they're not complaining about it because that's what you hope happens, mm-hmm. but it's it's the appreciation is much. That's why he's so appreciative, and why it feels authentic is because it's truly appreciation. He was in jail at 26. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's lived, it looks like it's two different people's lives. Uh-huh. Yeah. It doesn't, you, you would say that's not even the same person. That's, you go, well, that's, those people probably don't even know each other. And you're like, no, it's the same guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's uh, a, a, a wonderful, wonderful person. And 
was very happy to you know to see that new artist and mm -hmm. it was it was super cool it was cool to watch man we watched most of that award show after brian show at zany's was the oh, same yeah, night yeah. during during yeah. the award show dusty was on it too well i'm happy to see that joe diffie wasn't around to see what they did to his songs that night yeah i, I met mean, his son i mean that tribute gosh that was bad <laughs> what are you talking about it was so bad joe diffie's so great and the, what they did to his songs what they do just, just sang it. They just sang them. Who I was think it you singing? Mean, Jimmy yeah. Buffett. It was. Uh, now it I'm was. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I just. It's Morgan, just funny Post Malone. Going, yeah. Morgan Whalen. Yeah. Uh, Wall, you know, Wall, Post Malone yeah. uh, and Hardy. And I was yeah. like, this is, this is sad for me because Joe Diffie was really great. Yeah. yeah. It was a sad moment for me. At least Post Malone is not a country singer, so I didn't feel so bad. He about seems pretty part. jacked. Yeah. Post Malone. Yeah. He's in good shape now. Yeah. He's very nice too. Like, I mean, he, he know. seems like the man. Every clip I see of him. Yeah. He's, he's, is he the one that was working nice. out before you guys at that place where y'all did a show? Uh, yeah. And the guy said, just yeah. whatever. So that's why yeah, he's yeah. jacked. He's working out. Yeah. Yeah. Him. I mean, he, he's gotten in great shape. Uh, I get told I look like him a lot in the uh, face. Not, we're not, not the good shape <laughs> part of it. I guess the tattoos, but the, I can see it. TikTok, I get comments all the time. Fat Malone, um, all that kind of stuff, yeah. <laughs> stuff like that. Well, I like it now. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, he's got a song on country radio right now, Dusty. You don't like that? Is it Pickup Man, the yeah. Joe Diffie song? Uh -huh. No, I don't. Mm. It jo Joe Diffie was really great, and I just didn't. I didn't care. At least with Post Malone, it's like he's not a country star. Right. So it's like when he sings it and it's not mm -hmm. Joe Diffie, it's not, it's okay. Mm -hmm. But the other guys are country singers. And I just, I don't understand the it. logic of that at all. What? Why, why is it better because he's not a country well, singer? Well, it's a, it's, you know, he's like a non country singer attempting a country it's song. It's like, yeah. there's no reason for Post Malone to know who Joe Diffie is, but the other two guys should know who Joe Diffie is. And they did. They did a tribute to him. Yeah, I know. It just wasn't good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's the point. That's what he's saying. Yeah. Okay. And it should be better because they're country singers. And a lot of people think that was you up there instead of Hardy. Yeah. <laughs> I saw Hardy. I would have done a better job. Hardy <laughs> sat right behind me. Yeah. I did not talk to him at all. Yeah. He's not very friendly. Is he? Yeah, I, I don't think so. <laughs> he's different than I thought he was. I, I think I was. He's different than I thought he was going to be. Yeah. I really like he was. I, I mean, I didn't say a word to him, so I, he might be the nicest. But it's but just being near him. It was, I was a little like, oh, it's kind of not what I thought uh -huh. he would. He, they're young. Dude. I mean, yeah. he's, he's a young no, guy. These young. guys get so famous. Well, that's true. I mean, and then they they're get, famous. They get just, uh, you know, you, and you have, it's a balance. If you got, then you got Chris Stapleton, who I think is a very, like, he doesn't like to be around people or talk to people, you know. Seems that way. I mean, when An he gave that singer, speech. Though. Oh, no. Yeah, it's amazing. crazy. But when he gave that speech at the end, you're like, I couldn't even hear him. Oh, really? So I, yeah. I I mean cuz he's like he's like this down he's like going on and on and then you're it's uh it's just a moment that you want to like I, you want to go to him and go like just don't talk <laughs> maybe, maybe that's why he didn't yeah. look at you maybe he's just used to being out there playing music and like just standing up accepting a award maybe was go be like uh you know have a little Marshawn Lynch kind of attitude of just go like <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate it. Like, cause it, I'm just here I think so I don't means, get fined. That, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it means a lot to him. Yeah. But it's, uh, yeah. But I mean, yeah, I don't know. I mean, he just turned, I mean, thankfully, I, I honestly, when I put my hand down, I was like, I shouldn't be doing I this. I mean, at that moment, cause Lee Corso had already kind of snubbed you a few <laughs> yeah. days earlier at the handshake. I thought if we get two in the same week, oh, Brian was praying. Yeah. this would be my favorite week ever. <laughs> yeah. Stapleton never looked up. He just looked, you know, uh, I always thought like you'd meet him, and be like, "Hey, man, nice to meet you." Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, you wouldn't even have a moment. There's right. no energy of like, "Please say hi to me." It's an energy of, <laughs> "I want to go back to where I." I talk. Morgan Wallen was in front of us too. His dad's coming to my show. All right. His dad. Oh, okay. His dad drives a truck still. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's probably a nice truck. No, oh, a truck semi driver. truck. Oh, it's a okay. Truck driver. Okay. <laughs> what do you think he made? Like, I was gonna say that's dad's so young he can yeah. still drive yeah still could be nice though <laughs> no. it could still be a nice truck he drives for yeah old dominion <laughs> yeah uh, I bet it's a nice truck you know yeah. old dominion the it's a truck but not the yeah, van yeah. but yeah and he drives for them and he still drives like wow because i because he said his uh it was funny but I, I i mean i talked to morgan just for one second but then his his dad like leaned over once and he's like you're the comedian because you're the one to beat 
Morgan's <laughs> record, right? And I was like, yeah. well, you know, I was like, I've been playing on that for a long, or whatever. And then he, and, he and goes, oh, it's good. He laughed nice. And he's like, yeah, we're, my pastor is a fan or something. I was like, well, I'm coming to Knoxville. Do you want to go? And he was like, is it, you know, he's like Monday, Thursday or something. He's like, he goes, I got to work, but <laughs> weekends I can go. And you're like, what? I'm like, you got to work. <laughs> And it's uh, and he's like, yeah, I'm a truck driver, and yeah. he just still he still uh, just drives his truck. I'm like a great dude. I yeah. like that guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he was very nice. Yeah. yeah, he was very nice. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it's a it's a young you know it's it's just different being there when everybody's just pretty young. Yeah, yeah. I just grew up on '90s country, and I love that country. I mean, mm -hmm. that's my favorite, and I don't. I well, just, they're still around too. Some of them, yeah. I Even mean, if he died, but yeah, yeah, but yeah. They're... Alan Jackson performed that night. Alan Jackson, Alan Jackson. Yeah, what he did. Play? Uh, yeah. The Jimmy Buffett. He did the Jimmy Buffett tribute yeah. uh, with do. Zach Brown, and uh, yeah, I don't ever remember what he looks he like. But he's like somewhere? huge right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's ripped too. Oh, is he? Yeah, yeah. He's gotten in good shape. Yeah, yeah. I heard he got a new wife. More. Uh, uh, Zach Brown. Somebody yelled that out at my show. <laughs> really? What? Why? Zach, Zach Brown is a new wife? Yeah. Why would they yell that out? <laughs> well, I made a joke. Quite a heckle. Well, oh, it was off you? a yeah. it was off a joke I had. But yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Yee -yee. Yeah. So there's a Zach Brown and a Zach Brown. Yeah, Zach Brown. Yeah, well, I'm Zach talking Brian's about Zach Brown. Different. Oh, I'm talking about Zach Brown. We're talking about Zach Brown as well. Oh, he kind of okay. looks like I don't sometimes know I think I look like that. Yeah. And Wait, no, I'm thinking of Zach. You're thinking of, yeah, we're thinking of different. You're thinking of is Zach he, Bryan, the young yes. guy? He's the one that's got, I know He Zach is Brown. big. Zach Bryan Zach is Zach Bryan, big, yeah. is, isn't he the one that everybody's going crazy about? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he sells a ton of tickets right now. Yeah, can you imagine? Think about the people that are listening to this that don't care about country music. <laughs> <laughs> they can, I mean, what It's world? labeled country music. They can fast forward if they want to. It's yeah. not labeled. Yeah, we'll label it. You mean like the thumbnail, that yeah, little part? yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll oh, that turn part. it off on YouTube. It is oh, now. Yeah, they can pass. They <laughs> I guess can... it has to be now. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah, because it's yeah. I mean, they're just like, what? <laughs> Who are these names? Uh, but it's I yeah. C Maze were they were they were super fun. I went out there real quick. I had that one little thing, and it was after Tanya's like, I mean, this she could stay in ovation. You know, people were crying, and then you're like, and you know that comic in you where you're like, I gotta follow. I had it. You have to say something sure. just because it's. I mean, it's like an emotional kind of thing. I mean, they're sitting down and I, and you're like, they're like, we got to go now. And so then I'm already being rushed out there. And then you stand, you say it. And what is she saying? Delta Dawn. Okay. Oh, yeah. Delta Dawn. Is that she, good enough for you? That's a <laughs> great, that's a great song. But I, I, I feel like, you know, it's like, that's like the, the main song that everybody knows Tanya Tucker for. And I just yeah. feel like it's such an old song that I wish she had more, um, you know, more like hits for yeah. herself. Yeah. Because that's a huge song. And I love that song. But yeah, it's a. Uh, she has like two sparrows in a hurricane. That song. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah. And she, and she probably knew Joe Diffie. So she should have had some, definitely some of Joe that involved in there. <laughs> she should have been in on that tribute. Yeah. 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 I mean, I don't know. Did you guys watch that tribute? Yeah, we were watching yeah. it. I mean, it's like. Yeah. God forbid the next generation pay homage to people of the past. Well, I'm glad it? they're paying homage, yeah. but I'm just saying. Where were you watching it's, it? Uh, I just, well, I tried to find your clip online. I did not watch the whole thing, yeah. but mm -hmm. I tried to find your clip. And so I ended up stumbling upon other clips. <laughs> And I thought, oh, here's a Joe Diffie tribute. This will be this will be great. And then I was like, oh gosh. And then Post Malone came out, and I was like, all right, well, this is a little better. Yeah. Mm. Well, I came off stage at Zany's, thinking everybody's going to be like, man, great, great job. And everybody was like, there's Nate. Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> everybody's watching it on the TV, just looking to see you. This is before you went up, just in the audience. Or there's uh, Laura. Yeah. Yeah. I think they showed us a yeah, lot. Two of y'all were on TV a bunch. Yeah, we were sitting in the real thick of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's you're as a comedian going to there. Met Peyton Manning too. Really? Uh, oh, yeah, that's cool. super nice. Uh, and then, but the uh, yeah, the being a comedian in that world, uh, you can feel it at home. You're just kind of like in a unicorn. Like there's just not, and they're just all around each other. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, and I imagine it's like anything. I mean, if an athlete 
you know, as comedians, we're just kind of like off the radar of show business, even though it's becoming a much more mainstream thing. It goes from, you know, we were just, we're not in the mix of it all. We're not at the award show, you know, maybe we're hosting or something, but now a lot more people know. Mm -hmm. And so it's, I remember I felt that years ago, Dusty and I did the show with Brad Paisley at Zany's. And you remember when he showed up to the club, it was the first time I felt like, oh, this is like a different level of fame yeah, that I fame. had not seen from comedians. Yeah. Like people outside going crazy. Remember that? Oh, yeah. 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 He told me we were going to have some cigars together. Never heard from him. I bombed so bad. Did you? Meeting him. You don't oh, remember oh, that? Oh, meeting him. I don't remember. <laughs> Dude, we were all lined up. It was me, you, and Greg Warren. Yeah. And we're lined up and, and Brad Paisley goes, just tell me something about yourself. And he meets Dusty and Dusty goes, well, I... You know, I do comedy. I like to smoke cigars, hang out. And he goes, oh, comedy and cigars. That's great. We'll smoke a cigar one time. Yeah, he turns to me and he goes, what about you? I just panic. I just go, same. <laughs> and he goes, comedy and cigars. And I was like, oh, I don't even really smoke cigars. Yeah. You know, I just completely bombed. <laughs> Thought about that all night. Yeah. Dang, that's tough. Uh, He's like, this guy's boring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this guy's got no personality. Same hey, thing. ditto, dude. <laughs> So that's a big thing in the comedy community. Huh? Yeah. Y'all do comedy and smoke cigars. Then yes. Greg Warren talks about peanut butter, and he's like, oh, yeah. gosh, yeah. you guys are the worst. I do comedy, sell peanut butter <laughs> on the side. And they're like, he's like, well, that's a fun, fun group we got here. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, that's what I was. So, yeah. Well, I was at Zany's. Great time at Zany's. These guys, like I said, were on the show. Dustin Nickerson was on the show. Hot show. So, it was a hot show. So Your buddy was on it. He he went way over his time, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. he was, but he was very funny. He was a nice was guy it? and very funny. Uh, Roy Johnston from News Channel Five. Oh yeah, uh, he came and he was supposed to do three minutes, and he did thirteen. <laughs> oh wow, <laughs> he's doing stand up. Yeah, he's doing crowd of work. Something. He was well, getting he, into it. Yeah. You know, he got into it. I asked him. He said that you never showed him where the light was. Well, that is true because he was so nervous beforehand. I'm like, I'm not going to bog him down with one more thing. He's got three minutes. If he goes five, that's okay. You're thinking I, worst case scenario, he does two minutes yeah. and gets yeah. off early. But he's a talker though, but yeah. he's a sure. professional talker. Comfortable in front <laughs> yes. of people. Yeah. He is. And it's hard to have a concept of time, especially if you've never done stand up. And he was into it. He was having fun. He yeah. was gonna blow that light if I told him or not. This was uh -huh. a clear case of ask for forgiveness and not permission. He had his yeah. own thing <laughs> planned out. And he brought out props. He had the whole thing. <laughs> As he walked on stage, you're like you could do this in three minutes. <laughs> yeah. We should have known looking back. His yeah. setup for yeah. Yeah. his yeah. setup for getting into doing the comedy was longer than three minutes. Yeah. He was reminding everyone, he was like, Before I bomb, I just want you to know I've done things. And he was showing awards that he <laughs> won. And it and it was all it was good. It was all funny. Yeah, he knew he was never gonna do this again. So yeah. he was just gonna live it up. Has he just been wanting to do it? Well, he he tells dad jokes like that's kind of like his side thing on the news like every Thursday night tells a dad joke and it's become, become this popular thing on there so I invited him to come sell some tickets for me and which he did I mean mm. people came but he really ran with it yeah well I mean he might need to do 13 if people came to see him <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe I should have cut my time yeah which they, I did they, <laughs> and Aaron did someone comes from channel five and they're like man they go that was the on camera all right well got it you were about to watch an hour of off camera <laughs> yeah the producer I, my thinking was you can tell a dad joke in 15 seconds so right you could tell a lot in three minutes you but. just expected him to go up there like Rodney Dangerfield rattling yeah. off yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. dad I did. jokes I did yeah. yeah but he showed me he did but it was a great show. We had a lot of fun. Um, it was fun. We did watch you in the green room afterwards. Um, and then this weekend, I was at Comedy Off Broadway in Lexington. All right. And great shows. Four great shows. A great club, huh? It is it a great is a club. Great Folks came to every show. They brought me gifts. It was just really fun time. Good deal, man. There's yeah. a lot of folks there in Lexington. Yeah, yeah they are. It's and they came. folk area. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I was not in a big folk area this weekend. I was in uh, Bridgeport, Connecticut. <laughs> All right. At the Stress Factory there. <laughs> Had my first full-on fist fight during during my show. All right. While I was on stage. With the MC? Mm -hmm. No, no. Two people. Yeah, the MC was involved. The MC was ended up being the bouncer. He had to he had to kick him out. But really? I was about three minutes into my set and there's full on fight. Two tables just went at it. Was it about one of your jokes? 
No, that's <laughs> that's the funny part is that it was like the least provocative show of you all time. Like, you were like, on. go Irish. And then people <laughs> yeah. just broke out. What was it? Do you know what they fought about? I found out later. So I, I couldn't piece it together during the show. I just saw two tables going at it. One table kind of kicked the crap out of the other table. Mm. And then the, the guy that punched them was like, I'm chill. I'm chill. I'm chill. And in my head, I'm like, you're the least chill person yeah. here right now. They all left. And then. That table came back, the table that knocked the other dude out, and they were great the rest of the show. So oh. I had no clue what happened. It turns out it was one table wouldn't shut up, and the next table just kept telling them to be quiet, and they didn't like being told to be quiet. So he squared up, and the other guy ended up being a veteran, military dude. So he just knocked the dude out, came back. Knocked over a bunch of tables on Veterans Day. On Veterans Day yeah. of all days, so wow. the veterans were the ones that were telling them to be quiet. Yes, the veterans were the they were in the right, and they came back and they were awesome. Wow! Yeah. Once they left and sorted everything, so out. not only have they been protecting freedom, they've also been protecting comedy. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I didn't know what had happened at the time. They just came back. And I was like, oh, protecting gosh. free speech all yeah. the way around. Did you right. talk to them when they came back? Like, I mean, you have to. No, I didn't want to bring it up because it was like a five to six minute, like, yeah. People forgot there was a show going on. Yeah. Because it was that big of a thing. Did what, you acknowledge it when it was happening? I, it was such a, like, it felt so serious yeah. that I, I didn't have anything funny or interesting to say about it. I yeah. just stood back, yeah. full on fight, you know, the, the, the staff's helping out how they can. Yeah. yeah. And you're in Bridgeport. Yeah. You're not sure if you're safe. <laughs> I know. Well, that's <laughs> the thing. It was, it, it felt fun. It reminded me of when there was a fight during your show in Tampa when yeah. I opened for you. Yeah. It very clearly had nothing to do with you. This fight had nothing to do with me. So I was just sitting back watching. Yeah. You know, so I, I never felt in I felt danger when I left the club. Yeah. But when I was <laughs> yeah. in so yeah. when I was on stage, <laughs> I felt completely fine. It's just it and it, but yeah, it changes the energy. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm talking about Tums. What do you and then there's a what do you what's the first joke back? Yeah, yeah. That after the fight. I think I said, Well, I gotta uh Hey, I'm still up here, by the way. I said that, and that got a big laugh. And yeah. then somebody yells, welcome to Bridgeport. And yeah. it got a huge laugh. Yeah, yes, exactly. All right. All right, we're going to get back into you it. Let that Let's guy come up and do some time. <laughs> yeah. <and> then... <laughs> yeah. Good night, everybody. <laughs> no, the crowd was, everybody else was cool. Once that one table left, it was like maybe the best show of the weekend, which feels crazy oh, to say. Yeah. Because well, there was I mean, a fist fight. Yeah, that But is, it was great. That's everybody what you need needed for your a shows. Laugh. Yeah. They that was the early laugh. show, too. <laughs> 7 30 p.m <laughs> on veterans day man but yeah that's uh a fight is it's good it's good yeah. that it happened though mm -hmm. i like it because it makes it that's just part of like that's the that's all the stuff you got to go through to just get you just dealing with the insanity of yeah that's the stuff that people don't see uh and are you know i don't even worry about people don't see because i don't like that like the not saying the audience has uh -huh. to see that but like comics when they start and then they think the comics that want to do comedy and they don't they they're like oh i'll just get up and do you like, but you got to go you got to have those situations and you're not yeah. picking those situations right. they just happen you right. don't know when it might happen maybe it doesn't happen uh -huh. odds are it's probably going to happen yeah and then you're going to be in some situation and then you got to just deal you got to you know stand on stage with the microphone <laughs> yeah. and and just I don't know, figure yeah. it out. And, it, and there's nothing you could say like, if 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 what if you're like that's going to happen to this weekend. If someone told you it was going to happen, mm -hmm. you you couldn't even prepare for it. No, there's yeah. not because you would think, well, what would I say? You go, I don't know. That's when your pure comic comes mm -hmm. out of you that you're just because then you gotta you gotta yeah. get the mood switched yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it took a while, but it ended yeah. up being being really good. That's, Everybody that's asked really how me, you like, become a good comic. Should you? They're like, where's the video? Because I, I didn't bring my camera that yeah. weekend, but I was like, it would not have been a good video anyway. I didn't and say anything. And it probably anything. would have gotten stolen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it would have got knocked over in the yeah, fight yeah. if it were set up back yeah. then. Yeah. But yeah, I, you, I mean, yeah, the video, it's like, it is, it's like that. Yeah. It's, 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 you, you learn more as a comic in that situation. You know what felt good? I called Dustin Nickerson after I talked about it. And part of it felt good because I feel like sometimes, I do these like cushy kind of soft shows. I do corporate stuff or like a church gig and you don't feel like you're mm. and they're like, Oh, I got a fight going on in my show in Bridgeport. Like I'm out here. Like yeah. I'm doing the real, the real stuff. Yeah. 
Well, it's and you got to really go through that. Totally. And you really do. Yeah. And then because that's the it's that's the whole point of comedy. Comedy is uh, it's for there's no preparation for the most. It, it is the most. That's why I think people it's starting to become a big thing because everything feels so produced or so made or, you know, written and all this. And it's the it's the only thing that. Music, music's like, you know, you can change people. I can sound good singing mm -hmm. with that Lake Beach song. <laughs> they can make anybody sound good singing. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes. Some, yeah. Not, not the Joe Diffie tribute. Yeah. 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 Not yeah. the yeah. Dusty yeah. standards, but not, yeah. Uh, <laughs> not Morgan Whalen. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> but uh, comedy is like in that moment right there is, is, is kind of a beautiful thing because it's just – uh huh. It's the rawest thing yeah. that could ever happen, and you got to just figure it out, and then get back into a show. Right. Right. And you, and it's at the beginning. Yeah, it's three minutes in. At yeah. forty-seven minutes left. Yeah, yeah. So. I mean, you had a fight break out at your last tape, special taping, so it could happen. Yeah. Anytime, anywhere. True. With yeah. Aaron. I did not. No, that was up there. I did not notice it. It was at the. Oh, okay. But you felt, said you felt like you heard something, didn't you? I felt like something felt crazy. Yeah. But yeah. it's like we're taping that special. Yeah. But it was the fight was up in the top corner. But I had the Tampa one. I've had the fire alarm go off back to back weeks. One start. I might have told that story, right? Stardome. Mm -hmm. Stardome, it goes, it's going off during the show. And I was like, do we need to do anything? And they go, no. And we just sat there. At the Stardome? Yeah. And the Stardome's burned down before. Oh, well, they that's were, hilarious. Yeah, we just it's like red <laughs> lights were just blinking for the rest half of the show. I've never done a show at Stardome, there's not an ambulance or fire truck there. Sometime that's true in the lobby. Well, you know, when it was yeah, Birmingham right. Comedy Club, it burned to the ground and then they reopened it as Stardome, yeah, destroyed all the carrot tops, had carrot props. tops act. And oh, stuff. wow, yeah. yeah, and then, yeah, and then that one, and the other one was in uh Parlor in uh Washington State. Uh, I they had a fire alarm and we had to. I had probably 20 minutes left and uh, I had to walk down with the crowd outside of, and then we all walked back up and then had to get back into the show. And that's, you know, I mean, that's man, that's, it's, it's, that's the stuff I don't want to go, you know, I mean, you might have to do it again, I, but it's the <laughs> stuff that you're like, I don't want to do again. Yeah. I but it's the that. stuff that you have to, yeah. you really have to do because you just have to figure out how do I get these people back into a mindset to of enjoyment mm -hmm. after just insanity just yeah. happened yeah yeah it was fun yeah yeah i don't know what the best time would be for it to happen three at least the beginning of the show is at least yeah like you I give you, a little break you right got the beginning and, yeah uh, now, i was in the green room you can hear the the other comics in the green room over mm -hmm. the loudspeaker and within 10 seconds the host is like all right come on stop we got a show. So you're like, oh, they're going to be a nightmare. Mm. So it was a problem all show. It just came to a boiling point three minutes into my yeah. set. That's why it's good to yeah. have the openers. You totally. Know? Like, get that <laughs> yeah. out of the way before yeah. I get up here. Yeah. Well, a lot of it is, yeah, a lot of it you deal with it with the opening. And, uh -huh. and, but it's, it, but you needed, but the headlining part aspect of it. And that's the thing for, I really, to be a, a great comic, you have to learn how to deal, to do an hour after that yeah. or during it or no matter where it happens. Right. Cause you got to learn to switch, you know, it's just like, uh, yeah, it's, it's yeah. crazy. It's fun. I mean, it's not, you know, you don't want it, but it's, <laughs> it's when you look back, you're like, that's, the, that's the stuff that it, you're, uh -huh. you know, cause it can't be worse than that. Right. At the, the, the late show, I said, you guys, you can't be the worst show of the night. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. yeah. And they were, cause they were, yeah. the other show was the best show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Blew you away. <laughs> They're like, yeah, we'll show you. Yeah. Why don't you maybe every show you like someone should fight? You try to start fights now. <laughs> yeah. You go, what'd you say? He goes, they're talking about you, man. <laughs> Dusty word. Well, right I was in Raleigh, North Carolina at the improv, and uh, it was great. No fights. Mm -hmm. uh, a lady got kicked out, but um, she didn't fight anyone. It was great. She yelled I, about Zach Brown. Wonderful what shows. Well, no, I got a joke I've been doing, and um, and someone yelled out in it about Zach Brown. Apparently, Zach Brown apparently has a new wife, and okay, something like that. Yeah, I don't want to give away my during joke. your Joe Diffie chunk. <laughs> well, I do have a bit of a Joe Diffie chunk I've been working on, but I didn't do it yeah. this weekend. Yeah, yeah, I like Joe Diffie. I think he's great. Yeah, and uh, and I just you know want when people do a tribute, I want it to be really good. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. 
And uh, so, but that was great. Oh, also, I forgot I brought them in the car, but uh, my wife dropped me off. But a lady in Des Moines gave us all like a Texas Roadhouse gift card. Oh. And I forgot them, but I'll get them to you after. I like but, Texas Roadhouse. But I wanted you to know that I think it's Texas. It's a steak place. Yeah. I think it's Longhorn? Texas Roadhouse. Maybe one of the two. Longhorn's nice. But I wanted you to know that this very nice lady in Des Moines, Iowa, several weeks ago, I didn't want to give them to you when we all weren't here. And then I yeah. forgot them last week. I mm -hmm. made them to your house this week, but not out of the car. But uh, yeah. she gave them to us. That's and she nice. was very nice. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. I did a Zoom show for Texas Roadhouse during, <laughs> during yeah, COVID. Yeah, you got to joke oh, about it. Yeah. yeah. They were having serious budget cuts, I guess. At the time, I had to crash their, I crashed their Zoom cocktail hour. Bomb pretty bad. Got out of there. So you anyway. just like you was like the idea of it was you were going to crash it. They're having like a hang out and have yeah. drinks together. And like, we got a special treat. And then I just nobody knows who I am. Oh, that's tough. You can't crash something if nobody knows who you are. And you then know? you just do, and you just go into your act. Man, yeah, Ugh. it's tough. Yeah. Oh, they did surprise <laughs> to the Zoom. Would you rather a yeah. fight or that? <laughs> I'd rather have a fight yeah. all day. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, a surprise. The Zoom, all the Zoom stuff was weird. I did a corporate and the internet. I was in a hotel in Atlanta. The internet wouldn't work. So I did the Zoom call on my phone. And the only person I can person I could see was the guy paying me. <laughs> so for an hour, I'm looking at this guy doing jokes. Yeah. Is he uh, paying was, attention and laughing? Yeah, but it I don't know if he knew I, I was the only one he could see, but it is brutal. Yeah, yeah that Just is brutal. One guy into my phone for an hour. I'm like, ah, I checked into this hotel the other. You know, it's like, ah. Oh, did God. you show him around? No, no. I, <laughs> The Zoom yeah. calls were tough. I mean, I figured it out during that time. I yeah. figured it out and I got pretty good at it, but it's, yeah. they could be brutal. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Brutal. Yeah. You had a little um, leaf raking incident. <clears throat> I understand. Oh, I did. Well. Have a, well, I've been collecting leaves because, you know, I've learned that leaves are great uh, for nutrition, right? For your, for your uh, garden and stuff. Oh, because, <laughs> okay. Didn't know where that yeah, was going. Leave yeah, with yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because all, uh, you know, all spring and summer, your your tree produces these leaves. And then at the in the fall, they drop the leaves and then they decompose over the winter. And that's how the tree gets its food. So there's tons of nutrients in these leaves. Oh. And so everybody just rakes them up. So I've been going around the neighborhood trying to get people to let me have their leaves, you know. <laughs> And if I see them, I don't, I, I would think if you walked up, I would almost be like, I bet this guy's about to ask me for my leaves. <laughs> like the, they're not even really surprised by it. They yeah. just go, ah, there's a guy at the door. You're like, I think I know what this is about. Well, it's sh shocking to me how weird people have been about their leaves. <laughs> like I would think everybody wants these leaves out of their yard. And so a guy coming along going, Hey, can I take these leaves? And you would rake them and yeah. But some people I've I've caught like you know they'll they'll be raking them and I'll be pulling into the neighborhood and I pull up next to them and I go hey if you get those bagged up I'll come take the bags. Yesterday I got twelve bags from one of my neighbors. How many leaves do you? Where are you doing with? Well, I'm gonna leaves? I'm gonna put leaves all over a whole area in my backyard to kill all the grass over the and then and then have it break down. It'll create a little bit of a topsoil and then I'm gonna plant some wildflower seeds. Okay. So I'm gonna have these all these wildflowers, native wildflowers. Right. But I was raking and then so I asked this one neighbor if I could rake his leaves and he was like, yeah, totally fine. And then the next house down just had. Just so many leaves. I was like, clearly, I've never seen this guy outside before. I was like, there's no way he cares about the leaves. So I'm just going to rake his leaves. <laughs> and then he comes outside while I'm raking the leaves. And apparently he did want the leaves. So he had kind of an awkward interaction. My nephew was there with me. My nephew was very uncomfortable. <laughs> I've been in plenty of situations like yeah. this. So it was not that big of a deal. <laughs> that for day. Me. I was like, oh, you want the leaves? All right, no problem. I was like, I'm sorry, I'm out here raking your leaves. You know, I was very apologetic, but yeah. I was also a little taken back that the guy wanted the leaves. But what if someone came and raked your leaves? Well, I want the leaves. Okay. So, oh, so well, I'm done saying though. Right. Like, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. It is. You could you like you could have said I understand because I think we're well, the same person. I did say that. <laughs> yeah. I said I appreciate that you want the leaves. Yeah. I said I'm sorry that I assumed you didn't want these leaves. Yeah. And then I talked to him about how the leaves are nutritious for the for the for the grass and for the trees. 
And then my other neighbor, he lets me have his leaves, but he really likes his lawn. And I was raking leaves out of his lawn yesterday and he told me I was messing it up, messing up his lawn by pulling out the runners. Yeah. So mm, what's like, a runner? It's like you got Bermuda grass has these runners that go under and that's how the grass spreads. Mm -hmm. So he helped me, you know, he had a, he had a, a thing that rakes the, like you push it. It's like a cart yeah. and it puts the leaves up in a bag, which I didn't know existed. So I'm about to get that. Yeah. I like those. So I'm pulling mm. up the runners apparently. And I didn't realize. I was so you just been it. using a rake. Yeah. And how bag. long do you got to collect these leaves? Well, I'm just trying to get all the ones I can. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm so into. Cause Nate's yard has some leaves. Yeah. yeah well, we have leaves. I'm, my truck's full right now. My <laughs> wife picked me up cause my truck's full because I got a, a, a bathtub in there that I bought today. Uh, cause I'm going to do a worm farm. And there's this guy from Australia, it's called the Weedy Garden. And he's like, uh, he's created, uh, you know, videos on different things. And one of them is a worm farm and he made it out of a bathtub. So I found one on Marketplace. Yeah. And so I got that in the back of the truck right it's, now. And then you got to, you got to do something. To, where's the bathtub going to be? Well, you, you I'm going to put, I'm going to take it out to the, the cab and I'm not going to yeah. put it at our house in the suburbs, but you got to, you know, you kind of lift it up. You put a little top over it. You put dirt and different, you know, food scraps in there. And then the worms just eat it. This guy looks like he's having a good time. This guy's great. The Weedy Garden Channel. I mean, it is. I'm surprised you support that with that Buddha statue. Well, I didn't. I, honestly, I've never seen that. But uh, <laughs> yeah. this guy gets into some stuff that I don't support. Okay. But uh, but he, there, you don't really have many places to go for this information. Right. This guy. I would imagine a lot of stuff that you how you want to live ideology wise. It's like it's going to mm -hmm. be tough to find. It mm -hmm. is you. You're kind of a one of one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This guy's great though. He's all about living off the land. Like, I don't think he lives off the land, but he's all about growing stuff and he protects the environment. That sort of, and I'm into that sort of stuff. Yeah. I'm not necessarily into the government protecting the environment, yeah. environment but I am about, um, you know, being kind yeah. to the earth. Yeah. Yeah. Like a Buddhist. Well, <laughs> well, like a Christian should be. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I am about being one with nature. You know? Yeah. Like yeah. Buddha. Uh, you're probably a wonderful neighbor. <laughs> well, it's been, I'll tell you this. I saw these two older ladies bagging yeah. up uh, leaves yesterday and yeah. I go, hey, if you'll leave those leaves, I'll come pick them up. Oh, that's great. And they were very happy. All right. Because yeah. they had 12 giant bags and they didn't have to set them out by the road and wait mm -hmm. for weeks for people to come pick them up. Yeah. Who usually picks them up? Just... I guess the city. Yeah. So. And now they don't have to have all these trash bags sitting out by their house. Right, right. Now you got them in your backyard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be great. I'm going to do a video about it. I want you to see my yard now yeah. and then next spring. Yeah, yeah. me too. It's going to be it's going to be something. I'm excited. I'm How many subscribers does this guy have? Is it like the real, is it like very, very popular? Yeah, it is very popular. Um, I mean, I found him during COVID, but uh, yeah, you got to see him He's on got a YouTube. Patreon. He's got, he's got 99. Yeah, you, got, you got to find him on YouTube. That's where it magnificent compost in 21 days. Yeah, he's got 177,000 okay. subscribers. Well, uh, he's doing pretty well. But he, he used to great. be a photographer, right? So he that's what's so great about his videos is he's like, I'm not saying I'm an expert gardener, but he's yeah. like my his he he has all the camera equipment. So the stuff he films, it's a very interesting videos. Yeah, is he in New Zealand? Uh, I thought he was in Australia. Oh, okay. You said that. Yeah. Well, I couldn't help to notice your new starter jacket, which mm -hmm. we've already talked about. And you're wearing Viore. Viore. We all love. Uh, we all have Viore. It's, uh, it's good. What? That's good. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nothing about my shirt, though. No. Well, uh, it's a great shirt. <laughs> it's a great shirt. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to wear Viore. I'm going to go to Zany's tonight do new material. Oh, nice. Uh, I think I'm going to just wear this outfit. Yeah. yeah. Because it's Stage great ready. everywhere. Viore is ready. great. Yeah. Yeah. It's comfortable, it wide, athletic, wear. You can wear anywhere. It's a new outlook on performance apparel. Perfect if you're sick and tired of traditional old workout gear. Viore can be worn for any activity like running, training, yoga, but also great for lounging or weekend errands or performing on stage at Zanies. It's comfortable. You'll want to wear it all the time. The website is very easy to order from. It's not cluttered or busy. Um... Viore is an investment on your happiness. For our listeners, they're offering 20% off your first purchase 
Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at viori.com slash Nate. That's V-U-O-R-I dot com slash Nate. Not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but enjoy free shipping from any U.S. orders over $75 and free returns. Go to viori.com slash Nate and discover the versatility of Viori clothing. All right. Uh, Let's read some of you guys' comments. Uh, Justin Maggard. Maggard. Tough one. <laughs> that is a tough one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm the artist who painted the portraits. That's tough too. No, I'm joking. That was, I, I just, uh, back to back, those were great jokes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I expected some roast on Brian's portrait. I couldn't find a very good picture for reference, so I had to use his headshot from Instagram. I'm glad the rest of the crew were happy with the results, though. I agree. That seems well, to be a theme for you. I mean, I, I don't think I said I didn't like it. I liked it. I mean, if anything, I think it was Dusty that was kind of pointing out maybe it didn't look at much like me as the others, but I think it's funny that, like, what did y'all do? Go in and he take a painting of you live in person? <laughs> well, I think I'd imagine what's hard for you is you My have face. no, yeah, like a beard is like you, there's you're just, yeah, yeah, uh, face. I don't deny that <laughs> you're just a face, you're just a face dude. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. you're yeah. like, you're like what when you play a video game, you're the start of before they pick stuff, a <laughs> <laughs> creative character. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is so true. Yeah, that is very true. Yeah. I agree with that 100%. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's funny though, like. Uh, just just your headshots, all I could find. So yeah. it's kind of hard to see what you look like. Just I the know. best picture you send around yeah. to, rep- <laughs> to represent yourself. The one he paid for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, thank I, you, Justin. I, yeah. I like I'm it. Coming the painting's around. amazing. Yeah. I'm actually coming around to you a little bit on this mm-hmm. painting. Mm-hmm. I really am. I, I actually like it. Because it may, I think it, yeah, I could see that. I think that's a, it's, I think it's a tough, you know, I honestly really, Which yeah, way? I think I'm coming around. Yeah. I don't mind it. And yours stands out more than all of ours. Yeah, I think mine's which the is best. a good thing. I think it's a startlingly accurate depiction of you, Brian. Yeah. 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 I, I'm not, I'm not, I honestly not. He, he did you a favor with the hair. He did me a lot of favors. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Yeah. Uh, Craig Metzler. Metzler. You guys were having a nice conversation about why things come in tent. Aaron is making some great points about the decimal system, and Nate yells out, what about peeps? <laughs> <laughs> Sounded like a third grade classroom. Yeah. yeah. What about peeps? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Kale, Kale Harveth. Kale Harveth. I wonder if that's tough when Kale became popular. Mm-hmm. The, you know. The, the vegetable. Or maybe mm-hmm. Kale's young enough that it was named after Kale. Like, after Kale it sounds popular. like a young yeah, person. Yeah. It's harvest season. It does sound like a young person. I'll take some kale. Mm-hmm. What name do you want kale? They go, all right, dude. They probably get upset about it. Compliments Horvath. Yeah. He goes, what's your last name? Horvath. <laughs> uh, hey, Aaron. We've lived in Hungary for about three years now, and the eggs come in cartons of tin. All right. At first, I was caught off guard, felt like, I've, like I felt short change. Then I thought, hey, this actually makes more sense. Everything is based tin over here. It just makes everything easier, easier, honestly. Oh, you're just living in the wrong country. That's why they're hungry. <laughs> missing two eggs. I did yeah, do some research good. on Ooh, this of why, why a dozen is even a thing. And it's the exact point that Brian made during the argument, I mean, which I think is you that 12 know that. has more divisors than 10 does. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so it's more convenient in a lot and of that's ways. That's what he said. That's what I'm saying. I'm Where'd saying you, it was the point that Brian made. Where'd you look it up when Brian's statement <laughs> about it? <laughs> the guy that's been around before they probably even. You guys should just listen to me more. He remembers when they switched. He remembers. <laughs> he, he, he was pre-carton. <laughs> he goes, he goes, you just walk out. Did you ever have a milk delivery guy? A door-to-door milkman? Aaron, you know that's not true. <laughs> I, I didn't know that was true. I don't know when they stopped doing that. But <laughs> when did they stop doing that? I don't know. The 50s? Okay. Uh, like like that. When the refrigerator off, was invented? <laughs> so you yeah. Might, yeah, you probably would have heard about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I bet they did it later than you thought. Uh, well, no, we didn't. Uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm sure 
1963, nearly 29.7% of consumers in the U.S. had milk delivered. But in 1975, just 12 years later, that number dropped to 6.9% of total sales. So something happened between 1963 and 1975. I could see that coming back because now people want fresh food i get some milk delivered sometimes i I bet you do i bet you do (laughs) yeah he has has a cow in his backyard where do you call well i have a farm that i get some stuff from and they have some milk that i order sometimes yeah i mean is he not kramer yeah yeah (laughs) it is you are kramer yeah uh scott hildreth i'd like to hear aaron and nate explain why hot dogs and hot dog buns aren't the same number that's more of a mystery than a dozen donuts that is, I've never, that that doesn't make sense. Well, there are more hot dogs in the pack than buns, correct? Yes. I thought it was the other way around. Now, I think that the hot dogs come in dozens, right? I think or, it's or, 10. Or eight, eight or ten, and then hot dog buns are... Eight, I think. Eight. Yeah. So you have to buy two. Yeah. So they have an incentive to to keep it less. If you get the Hebrew, the Hebrew National hot dog, it is the same as a pack of buns. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. Know. Your hot dog. and that—that's something that uh, people have let slide. Uh, but it's like we should have probably really gotten a lot more angry about that because that's crazy. Yeah. Demand but, it. Yeah, mm-hmm. and just yeah. go. Well, you're being ridiculous. Right. There's a scene in I think Father of the Bride where Steve Martin just flips uh, out yeah. and like tears another one open, right? And yeah. Steals two hot dog buns. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Scene. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kevin Reynolds. Nate, when you present it at award shows like the Grammys or CMAs, do the producers write what you say? If so, do you have any say in changing the text if it's a word you can't pronounce? Yeah, I, I would. I mean, I yeah, I mean, I have to do that all the time, which is not always the funnest. Hold on, let me. That went a little too low. Uh, my seat. Uh, yeah, it's not always the funnest. I'm mean, gonna I do an mm-hmm. SNL where you have to. Look at people and go, I don't know what that word is. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, you get to do it. Uh, I, and I sent mine to uh, young Brian Bates because it was just a rework. Because this one they wanted me to do. I did a joke about the, the seat being. They wanted me to do that joke or normally I would write my I would write my own. Or the seat I, being stolen from yeah, Bruce and Yeah, yeah. So they wanted that. They wanted me to do that. And then I just sent it to Brian to be like, hey, just put like what's because it was it's not in my rhythm. And it's just like and so he just had it, you know, he just where I was like, I like saying it like that better. More of a. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's uh, yeah, you would. Yeah, you have complete. I could make I could say whatever I want. Uh, Really? I mean, you know, obviously you walk out there and you could. Uh, Brian Oglesby. Uh, with Nate's recent rise in popularity, he's definitely playing in this year's NBA Celebrity All Star Game. Get that jump shot already. Uh, would you do it? I don't know. I I, I would have always wanted to do it. Now I don't think I would do it. But uh, it's just too much. Because last just, week you said you could pass from the NBA. I could. I think. I. I mean. I would. I would want. I would want to do it. Mm-hmm. To be like, I could, dude, I could do layups with the NBA and you wouldn't and shoot. My jump would be, you know, you I got could, a good jump shot. Yeah, I think so. Well, not, one comedian played in the last celebrity all star game. Do you know who? Hassan Minaj. Yeah. 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 And then uh, I watch every year. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, I, I just think I'm now, I'm like, it's like I, I always wanted to play. And then now it's like, I'm just a little probably. You know, I don't know. And you just get so busy. That's the anytime you get asked to do this stuff, you just get no one asks you until you're the busiest person ever. And then you're like, yeah, I don't You're like, you just think about all the, like, I got to go get there now. And, you know, it's just like a whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just, it's not, you know, it's not downtown Nashville they're playing. Right. Uh, it's, it's, you know, there's a, yeah, it's just hard. Yeah, it's like one time I did a TV show called Nashville Squares, and mm-hmm. I thought, well, this will be great. For sure, this will be in Nashville. And it was, of course, in L.A. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, jeez. <laughs> yeah, Nashville you gotta go. show. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's the hardest part is, 
I'm learning with my career is like the spreading out. You're getting pulled in. There's a lot of stuff going on, pulled in a lot of directions, but I don't want, luckily my, the hour I have now is basically, I have the hour that, so when I do tape a special, it'll be, I feel good about it because I got to get it together before all this stuff happened. And then, you know what? And I had a lot of people talk about the me take, do you have the stuff about me taking a break or something in here? I don't. But I think a lot of people reached out about that. Yeah. I'm not taking a break. They took I'm, it very serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I understand. Yeah, I could see that. It's not, I'm not taking a break. I'm just saying when this Be Funny tour, it's these last two tours were so close together that I just want to make sure I can, A, get some material, live a life. It's really for the comedy. Yeah. I think I will have some other projects that I'll be doing, but it's it's just kind of being like, let me have a breather right now. And then when we do, you know, the next tour and then 2025, it's, you know, we can be like, I can have built an act properly and then been ready to go. Cause as you do these big venues, it's, it's hard to build an act in an arena. It's just, it, it's such a big thing. You really need to do some clubs and properly do it. That's what I meant by that. Uh, and I think I'll probably end up doing, you know, I, I bet I could end up doing some other, projects something or whatever it is but uh yeah i'm not you know i have a good I have a good steady plan of where i want to be and uh i always kind of think i always thought 40 to 50 was like a big run and then i then but it's like i'll just see where i'm at at 50 that's and what i did yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> saw where you're at mm -hmm. dove in hard mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. started backing off started saying no i have, i do have to say no sometimes <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, Justin Gibson barefoot is absolutely right about the soccer thing. <laughs> Your team would know not to Thank pass you. at you and you would just move back and forth with the rest of the players. No one would blame you for not stealing the ball from an opponent or anything. Dusty and Nate will look so slow compared to the other swimmers. Absolutely no chance of blending in. Boom. That's this, what I'm saying. This guy has no idea how fast I can swim. I can swim fast. I don't know how fast uh, I could swim. I would but go. It's like just saying this guy who does never see me, we've never been swimming together, me and this guy, <laughs> yeah. Justin Gibson. You he sure? Has, he has no idea. I can swim an under underwater the full length of the uh, Olympic size pool. Yeah, I bet I can too. Yeah. Without you coming up, you think you other. could? No. Uh, no you think I think I could. I'd like to do it. <laughs> I'd like to do it too. Yeah, we're doing I mean, it. I'm all about it. This guy, assuming that he... That Brian would look better on a soccer field than I would look in a swimming pool. It's just like, that's just. I would do that. Just do, I would go underwater the whole time. And where they go, I, that's not the race he was supposed to do. <laughs> but then it's like, <laughs> but it's impressive that he was able to stay under that. He did long. come yeah. in last, but he stayed underwater. He stayed under the most whole time. Freestyle. Yeah. 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 Free. He did freestyle. He goes, I do my freestyle underwater, mm -hmm. which is actually the slowest way to swim. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that I'm ready to win the Olympics, right. but this the, the idea is that we're able to go out there and swim, and 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 what would be the sport you would have the best chance in? And that's what I said is swimming. And everybody's but that's acting, not the way it quite how I presented it. Everybody's acting like I'm out here going. I think I'm going to quit comedy and get into swimming. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You go out there, you got that shirt on. Yeah. That owl hat. <laughs> you got to take it off, put your hair in a ponytail. <laughs> yeah. You'd be a fan favorite. And I think people would go, wow, that guy swam a lot faster than we expected. I And I and I still will stand by this, that I think you should go into the women's division and then just be like that. Yeah. No I think one would that, question you. No one would question that. Yeah. It would be like, oh, here we go. You know, yeah. it would be kind of like... And you're just, you know, it's like, here we go. Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I just, you know, wherever I blend in the best. Yep. How was the question presented? Well, just not blend in because that would be the best that you would be at the sport necessarily. Just that least. No one would notice. Likely to, yeah, that you could blend in and people wouldn't even notice you're out there. Mm -hmm. That's why I just think it should be a team sport. More I just don't maybe think. Avoid I think action. if you were on the soccer field. And I'm not even talking to you. Any non-professional yeah, soccer yeah. player, uh, it would be so obvious. I mean, those guys are in the best shape of anybody. Yeah. But if you play, but like you said, like Messi stops, I understand like the idea of you could just kind of hang in the middle and blend in. You could just yeah. run over here. Now, I think you're running. That if you go watch him <laughs> run, <laughs> it's going to be – I think I could run where I would blend in. 
So it's like athletically, is your run going to be like, what is up with that dude? Yeah. Have you ever seen me run? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Have you ever seen me run? <laughs> no. I don't, I don't know. I can just picture you <laughs> well, I'm, just I, running. And I mean, just always on your hands on your head all the time. And everybody's like, I mean, he hasn't done anything. <laughs> and you're yeah. just... And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then that's when, that is true. And then when you go and when the other team, when the ball, just the frustration of when the ball gets the down switch, and you thin the switch and you're like, oh man. <laughs> and then you got to start running, you know, over that way. They always yeah, put like, their hands on their head at the very end of the game when it's kind of, or they'll lift their shirt. I'd be doing that. <laughs> like, how long do you expect to be able to blend in? When they go number 45. <laughs> Uh, if I'm not mistaken, did not come out at all during warmups. <laughs> <laughs> so he's sweating somehow. Yeah, but something, something said he couldn't handle that and the game. <laughs> he, they, he told him, you got to pick one. I can't do both. Yeah. So we're looking forward to see if he, how he does out there. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't, I think I'd probably be given away. I'm not saying they wouldn't eventually catch on, but yeah, I just, might go the longest if I could stand that middle and just like ah I was just just a little bit behind mm -hmm. the whole time <laughs> I mean I would think um, you're so slow you would it would just be <laughs> yeah I mean like I always think of soccer players I mean as just, the most in shape in the world just they are. In the insane you would I think you could be <laughs> I picture you Turning around because the ball is going the other way, and then <laughs> you don't even get turned around, and the ball goes back. It, it's like it's in your like God. It's a lot quicker you're than just I in thought. that little and circle. You this, yeah, you never really make it out of that circle. <laughs> yeah. If you just had to, if they if they told you just stay in the group, yeah, like that, like the, your goal is just stay. I don't uh -huh. know if you could stay in the group. I don't think you could. I think you would have to just stay on that one back yeah. with the, the guys that don't go all the way up. Yeah. That's a big field, man. That's a big field. <laughs> our little dog zips around, and our daughter tries to keep up with her. And before she can turn around, our dog's already zipped past yeah. her. You're saying that would be me on a 100%. soccer field. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my thing here is, it's not that you would be so terrible at soccer and that I would be so great at swimming. It's just the idea that me saying I could blend in with swimmers seems so ridiculous. That's but, your four foot eight. But you blend in, <laughs> but you blending in with soccer players is just oh, oh of course. Yeah, you would blend right in. I would I would love if we can try to do this somehow. If we could say we get uh, we do a camera that's like one of those like for the video cameras where they show like we can't even really see the players' faces, it's uh -huh. like you're just looking at formations or something. If we went and got a real soccer match going, and then you just – and then in just each one of us just went in and out, and you could – and you would try to be like, who could you – who could you guess was who? Well, I would never blend in in soccer. I mean, I wouldn't – You might. Even, Why? I, 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 I would be so winded. I can't run. I, be, I mean, I get so winded running. Yeah. I know, but you got to blend. It's just blending in, and you act like we got a track star over here. Well, that's what like, I'm saying. I mean, his his middle name's winded, and he goes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, I mean. <laughs> but he's he's gonna figure it out. I'm saying you got to, you have to, you you would you would put your hair up in a bun, and then which you looks just, like a soccer player. Yeah, yeah. What does your run look like? Does My it, run looks. It's fine, not bad. I think it's not bad. You've I've seen, seen his run. I've seen you run. Yeah, Where? I think my run is fine, but I. Where was he running? I don't know. I can just see it in my head. You run it. My run's fine, but I just, you know. I'm, you can see not, it in your head. It, you what? picture his run in your head? <laughs> I can see it, yeah, as if I've seen it before. I don't know where or when it happened but i but i i got a pretty good image of it in my head it's not usain bolt but it's you know but it's like athletically enough that you don't you wouldn't go, be like that guy shouldn't be running yes someone is not yeah I'll that's what i mean that. i think your run like where what is your run i mean the last time i ran was when you and i were being shot at in san antonio yeah when was that uh 1975 <laughs> yeah <laughs> i guess no it was uh when we first started a tour and a guy there was somebody firing guns. shots and oh, we wow. took off running yeah <laughs> and it was not great. Well, you I weren't mean, even looking. Because I was gone. <laughs> well, don't <laughs> say it's not great then. Well, you don't know. It, no, I was looking because I had to stop and look for you. Because <laughs> it looked like once we, once the guy, so if we've, I think we've told the story, yeah. but it's like the, the guy's sitting there and he 
just out, out of nowhere, these teenagers are walking. It's me, him, and Noah, the tour manager at the time. And so they're walking this way, and it just got a vibe of it feels weird. And then they just then the kid just turns and shoots down a street for no reason. If he turns the other way, he's going to just hit us. So we all take off running. So me and Noah take off running. I look back. I mean, it looks like Brian's run looks like he's getting closer to him. <laughs> it's that's how slow it was. It's. <laughs> I mean, we're in a we're in an open street, and you got to It's it's there's really there's like some trash a trash can or something. There's you got to really <laughs> get somewhere to try to get behind something. There wasn't like cars or yeah. uh -huh. there wasn't a lot of stuff. Yeah. It you would have if you believed uh, we were in the Truman Show type thing, you would believe that moment was a Truman Show type. Like you would have think we could have been a Truman Show because it just felt very crazy. Yeah, to be it felt quiet. Yeah, it was where it almost looked like a Hollywood set, and then <laughs> and then we then me and Noah just take off running, and then I, I I but I look I don't leave you I don't try to leave you but I mean it was you know he does like a few of those. Where he runs in place before he kind of gets going, <laughs> like a like cartoon a character. character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it was like there's dust flying. It was like once, <laughs> once the gun went off. I mean, I think Brian just has to go. Like, if it's going to happen, Lord, it's going to happen today. <laughs> because this might be my time. I had a good life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What you know, would you do if you were running? I would have got on my electric e-bike and I would have been out of there immediately. Are you looking for the best gift ever? Have you guys done holiday shopping yet? You bought some gifts? No. no. <laughs> <I know. laughs> looking for that best gift ever effect this holiday? Electric e-bikes will impress even the hardest person to shop for. There are lots of e-bikes to choose from, but there's only one electric e-bike. It's the best selling e-bike in America and for good reason. Starting at just $7.99, these e-bikes are affordable. Plus, you can get hundreds of dollars in free accessories when you purchase this season at electricebikes.com. L-E-C-T-R-I-C. -E like electric without the E. Mm -hmm. We love them, and you will too. I've told you, I take this thing on the road with me. It folds in half, fits in the back of my car. And I don't drive a huge car, but it fits in there. It's compact. It's ready to go. They have quality feature-filled models. Finance as low as $73 a month. It won't cost a fortune. They have the best customer service i've ever used for a company you call you get a human being right away and they talk to you like a human being and that's big with electric e-bike you can save on traditional transportation stop taking the bus they cost way less than the competition and like i said they're foldable and they ship free and come fully assembled listen i could talk about it all day Get hundreds of dollars in free accessories with any electric e-bike purchase this season, including America's best-selling e-bike, the XP 3.0. Visit electricebikes.com to find the electric model for you. That's L-E-C-T-R-I-C, ebikes.com. Boom. How about it? All right. Uh, Chad Stapleton. Oh, boy. This is oh, Stapleton. He's already heard about. The brother. Yeah. How dare Dusty mentioned that football players are too strong and they have to have rules to counteract that. How does he feel about restricting plates in NASCAR? The cars are too fast. Why not just use smaller engines? Well, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know anything about that. Um, I think the problem with NASCAR, I think, is that uh, there's too many uh, big time corporate sponsors in there. So every car is like, you know, millions of dollars. I think that's the real problem. I think it needs to go back to some basics uh, where, you, where you just build fast cars rather than just having access to all the greatest parts in the world. You know Are I mean? they faster now? I thought they were faster back years I ago. Don't well, they, they, you, didn't they do restrictor plates? It feels like if you have a restrictor plate and then everybody has the best stuff oh, they I see can what buy, you're saying. Yeah. then all the cars are the same well, speed. I think they could probably go 250 miles an hour now if they would. Like, I see. So they had to He's be saying like, don't have restrictor plates, just make smaller engines. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know uh, about that. I, I, I just think that the pro you know, it's like everybody gets hurt all the time in the NFL and that's because they're so strong. I don't know if people are getting hurt all the time in NASCAR. So that's my point is it's like they keep making these rules to kind of make it weaker because everybody's so strong. And I just feel like, you know, a lot of the tackling stuff is what's fun. And they call roughing the passer a lot when it feels like, ah, that wasn't that. I mean, I know all the hits are big when you're being hit by somebody like that, but sometimes it's like, come on guys, the guy sacked the quarterback. And instead of getting the sack, now it's a huge penalty when mm -hmm. it's like, was it really that big of a deal? Mm hmm that's my that's my point. Now these NASCAR the vehicles are capable of going 230 miles per hour, but they limit it 
via restrictor plates to about 200 miles an hour. That's about as fast okay. as they Yeah, can that go. I feel like then all the cars are I the mean, same. Crazy. And it really comes down to the driver, which yeah. uh, maybe that's the way it should be. But I, I, I don't know. I don't know NASCAR's popularity now, but I know that my family, the, the redneck side of things, is not as into it as they used to be. Yeah. You know? Because it's not really a redneck sport anymore. It's very corporate, I feel like. Mm, yeah. Mainstream. Mm. Mm. I don't know. That's just uh, my thoughts. William Gallano. William Gallano. I wonder why Nate went to I wonder why Nate went to El Salvador. I've never heard comedians going there for shows. I lived in El Salvador until I was twelve years old and I still go back every year to visit my family. I was there for the USO tour like a uh for the troops oh. uh el salvador and uh, uh honduras which I have a joke about the guy yeah the snake joke uh -huh. it's a good joke do you, yeah. know, do you know where they're located yeah we went through it last week uh but yeah yeah so that's why i was down there uh yeah, mm -hmm. that snake jokes. I still like telling that. I I don't remember it now, but I that's one that I could hang on to that I could have remembered. I remembered for a lot longer, and would I could pull it out sometimes. Who told you that the snake? That's a very fun. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. it's like a fun one to tell. Greg Cannon, I would like to see an episode where the guys discover new countries by simply bra or browsing a globe. We could do yeah. that. That'd be a fun one. Mm hmm. I yeah, mean, like what, we've learned what a lot. like we discovered the um, spelling of turkey. Yeah. Like that that's got that's new. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm I mean, I remember making the me. joke that it was spelled. But like when you Burma, the oh Myanmar. He goes, I think it's Burma. Myanmar, Myanmar yeah. But Butan. You know a lot about Butan? Never no, heard of it. No. Butane. I don't know what's going on here. Uh it's yeah. in the thick of it though. It's in the mix. It's right next to Bangladesh, Nepal. I mean, West Bengal, China. I mean, like, what are they? Kolkata, Kolkata? Calcutta. Oh, Calcutta. I watched a YouTube a thing on, on like the coldest country oh, in the world. And yeah. I think it's, it's kind of a, I mean, it, it's like right next to Russia and maybe even a part of Russia. And it was Siberia, uh, but it's like, uh, you know, everyone looked Asian and they, and it's the coldest country in the world. And it was like, it was really wild. I really enjoyed it. What was the name of it? I think it was to the, yeah, I don't know. To remember. the west of them? I think it was to the other side. Mm -hmm. Alaska? No, some country in Russia, maybe, or some some city <laughs> in there. It's <Let's> Mongolia? <laughs> we really need a globe. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, but it, I mean, that, that kind of stuff is really great. I mean, yeah. it's really fun to just discover what people have to go through, how they have to live. Uh -huh. and it all seems so normal to them and not that big of a deal, but yeah. to me, it that seems insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you want to go see the future go i mean go there you're not gonna see the future but if you want to feel that what we're in is the future oh yeah yeah go go there and then you're gonna go oh we're yeah in the future yeah yeah we're gonna mississippi for a weekend and then come yeah back. Uh, ooh. uh some shots that that little yeah. alabama doesn't like Mississippi. yeah i'm sure yeah. i almost said alabama then remembered i was from there yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah switch it up that sometimes uh, Leland Rounds, for crying out loud, how can you talk about SNL nonstop and not make the connection that Give Me Some Lovin' was covered by the Blues Brothers? All right, calm down, Leland. I n I'm not a huge Blues Brothers fan. Yeah, I wasn't. I, I didn't know anything about yeah. yeah there's yeah. one great line, though, where Dan Aykroyd picks up uh, John Belushi from prison and they come back to his house and there's all these trains going by. And he goes, uh, how often does a train come by? He says, so often you won't even notice. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's such a great line. Yeah, it is a great it's line. so funny. Uh -huh. And then the other one, I think this is a little more classic where they go, what kind of music you play here? Both kinds, yeah. country and Western. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, sounds like it's your favorite movie. <laughs> yeah. uh, Those two lines are great. Yeah. Leland's fired up, though. Yeah. Yeah, one guy called us an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, he goes, you guys are idiots. We're not knowing well, that. But we'll Leland used it in, in, in Tarot Bang at the end there. Huh? Which we've talked about on the podcast before. Question mark and an exclamation point. Oh, yeah. Uh, how yeah. mad are you about this, dude? Yeah. How do we not connect it? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I right. wasn't even here, so. We messed up. Uh... Give me, give me some love. <laughs> give me some love. Give me, give me some love. Oh, you mean from the Blues Brothers? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, if you had said that, I would have. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, Eddie no, no, no. and Chelsea. Well, I'm sure now he's even more frustrated when, <laughs> when Dusty literally gives two lines <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. from the movie. He's clearly watched it and thought about it a lot. And apparently they're making a Days of Thunder too. Are they? Yeah. That making a good out, burger. Kind of came out well. of nowhere. All right. Uh, well, give me some loving was also for oh, Days of Thunder. That, yeah, well, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, Eddie and Chelsea Polinsky. Dusty deserves better. The movie he got stuck That's on true. with Woody Harrelson was The Highwaymen with Kevin Costner about the Texas Rangers who come out of retirement to hunt down Bonnie and Clyde. I don't think so. I'm going to have to say, as much as I appreciate Eddie and Chelsea Polinsky, and you're right, though, I do deserve better, but... <laughs> just in general. Uh, but <laughs> I was thinking about Natural Born Killers. I just... I was thinking that in that movie... Uh, Woody Harrelson, because I never watched it because it's it's too much for me. But uh, Woody Harrelson and now I can't think of the girl's name again. But Juliette Lewis, Juliette Lewis, that they were Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah. But I'm glad that you brought up the Highwaymen because I would like to watch this. Kevin Costner and and Woody Harrelson sounds like a great movie. I found a cast. movie last night. Uh, we know Shawshank. Yeah, watch it again. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm still on the. This will make y'all even. <laughs> <laughs> Not happy, but it's a uh, called Chariot, and it's on uh, a, a fire. No, <laughs> no, it's just called Chariot, and the movie is. I just like saw it on Amazon. Uh, it had uh, <laughs> it's only seventy seven reviews. It doesn't even have a Wikipedia. It's right below it, Chariot film. Oh, With John Malkovich. Uh, that's, no, 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 no. That's not it. It's uh, <laughs> what's the Chariot? movie right there 2013 it, it doesn't have a wikipedia yeah. entry yeah that's probably it yeah that's probably it <laughs> it's don't like look into it uh yeah uh it's a story oh, yeah that's it this is it yes oh john chariot. malkovich is in it no oh, no there's one. another chariot that he's that one in. right there maybe the but one. don't look into it too much but i mean it's it's pretty good and like even when I started reading stuff about it last night, <laughs> how do you find these? Twenty six percent. Then even it's it's good though. It's fun. The the acting's not an that, hour twenty seven minutes. I saw a guy that I looked because I look you look up their views <laughs> and I saw one that uh, this guy he said it perfect. He goes, you know, it's like the acting's not crazy. <laughs> but it's a good enough plot that you end up going, you watch the whole thing. Oh, uh, okay. And you're they, the whole thing's filmed in an airplane. Okay. These all in seven, one plane? All in one plane. These seven people, all I mean, they they said somewhere they made the movie for like 40. Don't read if you, if you don't <laughs> see you, you can't give the whole point. It's only right. worth watching if you don't know what why they're in that okay. plane. Okay. I'd like to read that one. It started off terrible acting, terrible script. <laughs> Save your time and find something. But then this one says, <laughs> interesting. And this guy says, interesting original film I would not want to see again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this one said the opposite of that. Ridiculous pop, but well acted. Well, that's, yeah. Well, you I, you end up kind of going like, I think I like all these actors. Like, uh -huh. it's one of those where you're like, yeah, the acting is not good. Then you go to, you know what? I think I like all of them. They shot it in, air, in an airplane. It is sometimes cool. fun to watch a movie that no one likes just to, you know, because... They, they, they said they made it for forty thousand dollars. Oh, that's cool. I like that. I like that part of it. Yeah, I mean it's and it's and it's just it's interesting enough. And it's like because you these these seven people, it's it's got a great hook. These seven people wake <laughs> up on a plane and they don't know why they're there, and so they got to figure out and they can't get into the cockpit. Okay, yeah, and I, they don't know. I like that. Yeah, why are they there? Why are you in that? You know. But and it's an hour and a half. It gets to it where you know b that dome movie when they lived in a dome or dome TV show. Mm -hmm. You remember? I, I was like, I wanted to watch that. You're like, well, they spread that up for over twelve yeah, hours, and you right. don't know what's happening. Right. This is an hour and a half, and then you do, and you don't know. Then you figure out why they're in it, in and out quick. Yeah. And it was like, Open and it moves, and, and yeah. you're just like, yeah, you, and you're trying to be like, why are they in this? Yeah. And you just don't really ever figure, you know. Any you figured movie, out at the end. Any movie less than two hours is is I'm in for it these days. It's like they make yeah. movies too long. It's like yeah. learn to wrap it up in less than two hours. Yeah. <laughs> Watch Chariot. Let me know. Yeah. That's the best publicity they've ever gotten. I'd yeah. maybe the score will go up. I don't know how you vote <laughs> for this, but uh I'll get in there and vote for it. No yeah. cri no critics care to even take a look at it. 
No, but it's not. But I mean, this is a movie that's like it's at least it's not this giant overmade. Thing. Yeah. It's like I mean, it's just this. It's just an interesting like what I read. Someone said it uh, like when you look up because I mean, yeah, you can't find really reviews of this, and so it'd be like said like Reddit, you know, like someone talk about that. They're like, you know what? He goes, this movie. He goes, it's not great acted, but <laughs> it was the. He goes, but the plot. It's just interesting enough that you end up going. You know what? I don't think I minded that movie. What? And you'd look back and be like, they didn't make it for any money. Where do you find it at? What Amazon. Platform? Oh, Amazon. All right. I rented it. Last oh, you rented it? Oh, it's, oh <laughs> I got to pay. I was going to say, I might, bought it. I might go home and watch it tonight, <laughs> but mm-hmm. uh, I got to pay for it. Well, it's two nine. Well, you're, you're, it's, going, it's helping these people yeah, out. Right. Totally. I totally mean, this right. is someone that. about Anthony Montgomery? You know, big, I watched. Uh, big Anthony Montgomery fan? Mm-hmm. I want to help him out. I watched SNL this weekend. It was the first new one since yours. Mm-hmm. And on Weekend Update, they had a, uh, a thing that they cut out of your episode that I saw in the dress rehearsal. Oh, really? What was it? It was uh, Heidi Gardner. She plays a character of about a really busy oh, yeah. worker, and she's throwing things around. And it was in your dress rehearsal. It got cut out of the main one, but it was on this week. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. How about that? Yeah. Tension. I bet they re-air yours over the holidays, like Thanksgiving or... Do they re-air them? Really fast. They've yeah. already re-aired Pete Davidson's. Oh, really? Yeah, they aired his last week. Oh, like on a... Yeah. So if they have off whatever week, when I assume they'll be off next week for Thanksgiving, they may oh, re-show yeah. yours. Yeah. yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I saw them, I and they were... They, they, they interviewed... Uh, it's interesting to see with the George Washington sketch, because there was an article they interviewed Streeter Seidel yeah. and Mikey Day. Yeah about doing it like it's already like there's articles about well what was behind this sketch yeah. which is nice that's great Very yeah cool. yeah all right uh this Dusty, week well i'll uh, see you yawning oh maybe you need a little helix mattress you know what <laughs> thanks uh thanks to our friends at helix sleep <laughs> <laughs> seamless <laughs> <laughs> I do like Helix Mattress. Thanks to our friends at Helix Sleep. Lucky for you, they're having a new sale. Helix is offering 25% off all mattress orders and two free pillows, November 10th through the 19th. So that's when the free sale is. And I like this. The mattress is great. I have two of these mattresses, as a matter of fact. And we have a lot of beds. We're always trying to get people to stay in our house. And the pillows are great. I, I, I continue to stand by this. It's the best pillow I've ever had. You do talk about the pillows a lot. Mm-hmm. I got a lot of pillows. We have, you could argue we have too many pillows at our house. But if the Helix pillow is not where I, I'm like, I can't, I don't know. I don't want to, I don't want to go to sleep until I find this, this mm-hmm. pillow. Helix Sleep is our favorite premium mattress brand with tailored mattresses based on your unique sleep preferences. The Helix lineup offers 20 unique mattresses, including the award winning Lux Collection. The new Helix Elite Collection, a mattress designed for big and tall sleepers, and (laughs) and even a mattress made just for kids. (laughs) Take the Helix Sleep Quiz and find your perfect mattress in under two minutes. Helix mattresses are shipped straight to your door, free of charge, with easy, no contact delivery. It is fun to open these up too. They come in that, they're like a little bitty thing and you open it up, it's so great. It's like a life raft. Yeah. They offer a 100-night trial to try out your new Helix mattress and offer a 10- to 15-year warranty, depending on the model. Unlike a lot of mattress companies out there, Helix owns its own manufacturing facility. Mm. Every mattress is made by a team of skilled manufacturers. Helix supports military, first responders, teachers, and students by giving them a special discount on site. Also comedians, because I sleep on their mattress and Mm -hmm. it feels good. By supporting Helix, you're allowing them to support Nate Land. Mm. Helix is offering 25% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners in honor of Black Friday. Go to helixsleep.com slash Nate and use code HELIXPARTNER25. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. And you know what? Last night, slept on the couch. That's why I'm tired today. Mm. Yeah, it was worse than oh, wow. Messed up. Got in a fight over the leaves. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get in a fight? Nah, we just got a baby, though, and we've been trying up some different, we've been trying some sleep training, so yeah. we kind of have surrendered our bedroom to the baby in hopes to let him cry a little bit mm-hmm. uh, before we go pick him up, hopes that he might go back to sleep. Yeah. So, yeah. But uh, I did have my Helix pillow, though, and that was nice. <laughs> yeah. That was mm-hmm. nice. What, uh, 
You think people won't come to your house because of the, the leaves? <laughs> I don't know. I can't. Uh, they don't know about the leaves. So mm -hmm. they may listen to this podcast. And if they find out, uh, you know, they may not come. But I think I'm having trouble getting my parents to come because uh, of college football. Uh, my dad, uh, you know, he needs to be at home. And uh, my mom has season tickets to the Auburn games. And she's been going to a lot of away games. Really? So I don't want to say that my parents don't love me, but not as much as they love college football. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're, li they're, they're living their life right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's impressive because yeah. Auburn's not having a great year. No. And she goes to the away games. She is a dedicated fan. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Hard. Very few bandwagon Auburn fans. They've been bad for so long. It's like if you're an Auburn fan, you're in it. They won a championship. Not Probably. long ago. Yeah, not but too, they were. Too long ago. Yeah, but. 10 years ago? 2011. When did y'all win one last? 88. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, like Notre Dame's been. Yeah. Is y'all's really 88? 88, three years before I was born. It's our yeah. last national championship. I remember game. it. Do you really? Lou Holtz. Yeah, yeah. yeah man. I, I remember it. Too. Reggie Ho. Lou yeah. Holtz was so great. And I tell you, I used to make fun of Lou Holtz a little bit. And, um, uh, because he always annoyed me on the when he was a commentator. Mm -hmm. But I, I was I was gonna make a joke about him. So I went and watched some of his videos. Very inspirational. Yeah, his inspirational I talks. Love yeah. Lou Holtz. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was like, dude. I'll never do that again. I'll never make fun of him again. Yeah. He's really great. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. This week we're talking about pets. Now I read that the uh, average uh, or not average, but in America, two thirds of Americans own households own a pet. For this table's three fourths, I guess. Yeah. No, it, you don't, don't have, have one. one. No. Yeah. Well, you've got probably some other stuff. I got some outdoor animals that I enjoy seeing, but uh, I and don't they, on the regular. On the regular, but I don't own them. You don't. Right? Yeah. And I don't like an indoor animal. You Would you feel bad if they died? Do you have that kind of relationship? Yeah. With them? Okay. What are they? Well, I got you know I got raccoons, I got possums out there. How I, do you know that it's the same raccoon? I don't know. I did trap a raccoon one time on accident, and I let him go. Or her, I don't know. I don't know them that well. But, <laughs> got a lot of birds. I got some squirrels. I'm thinking about putting up an owl house, and um, so we'll see how that goes. In your neighborhood? In my yeah, in my backyard. Got I mean, a whole just ecosystem. Your neighbors yeah. are gonna be like just because I mean, well, they, they, they those things don't stop yeah. owls. Yeah. yeah, my my um, I got some. My HOA is pretty loose, you know, and I got some neighbors <laughs> in back back of me. They have a lot of chickens. Um, so I think, you know, you, you're saying they don't stop making noise, the owls? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's always cool when you hear an owl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it like, yeah, but like if you had an owl house, I'd imagine if you heard it all day, every night, you'd be like, all right. All right. My wife might hate it. Yeah. <laughs> She's kind of against it. It's see, I'm either I want a I want a nighttime creature out there, so I'm either going bat houses or for, owl. For what houses. reason? Yeah. Just that, uh, just to have. Well, the bats eat mosquitoes. Okay. And they say they really can eliminate a mosquito problem if you have a colony of bats. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and we possums have so eat many. ticks, possums, yeah, possums eat, eat snakes, ticks. even yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and when you have chickens, I feel like we're going to have more snakes. And then, um, why is that? Because they come for the eggs. Oh, I see. And, um, and I don't have chickens, but my neighbor does. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, an owl will eat rats. And I hope moles. We got a lot of moles. I'd love for it to get the, get the moles. Yeah. I remember it was the first it's got thing. got a real we... battle going here. I mean, you're, <laughs> yeah. it's a real Roman Coliseum in the yeah in the backyard there. I'm just all about getting this wildlife going. That's why I'm yeah. into native flowers. Now, I have so many bees now. I'm all about Now it. you have worms, right? Oh, well, not yet. I'm going to have them. And they'll be indoors. No, no, no. I no. thought you were keeping them in the bathtub. Oh, a bathtub, <laughs> but oh. for outdoor. I'm not gonna... Oh, I envision the one you like, you just push them over and oh, you no, shower no, with no. them. I'm going to be, this is going to be a completely outdoor worm. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> what was your McMinnville house? I didn't know what goes yeah. on out there. Your cabin. Yeah. Were you about to say something, Aaron? Uh, I don't remember. What All were right. you talking about? We were talking about outdoor, all kind of animals. Outdoor, outdoor animals. animals. And moles. Yeah. I don't remember. It'll Sorry. come back to you. Yeah, it will come back to me as soon as we've moved on. So dog, dog, two cats? Two cats now, yeah. Two cats. Did you ever have pets growing up? Yeah, I did have pets growing up. I had a dog. I had um I had a dog uh when I was a little uh living in the trailer park. It would it would always grunt when it was a puppy and my my uh, friend told me I should name it Grunt, so I did name it Grunt. And I had a dog named Grunt for a long time, and then it disappeared. My friend 
told me he saw my mom loading it up into the dog pound truck one day. Oh, gosh. She denies it. She said <laughs> that didn't happen. And I can't see my mom doing it. But I also don't know why my friend would say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah how would she make that up? <laughs> so, I don't know. We but, never had indoor pets. Everything was outside. And yes. I feel like that's kind of gone. Grunt was an oh, outdoor yeah. dog. Yeah, Grunt was yeah. an outdoor dog. I mean, we didn't live on the in a farm mm. or, you know, or in the country. We lived kind of in a neighborhood type area. And yeah. everything was outdoors. Outdoor yeah. cats, outdoor dogs. You almost seem young enough that people would be upset about that. Because nowadays you can't get away with that like you used to. Not where we lived. Okay. You know, it's just kind of understood. I remember our dog, you hear it outside going, when it was cold, yeah, it would want to come in so bad. My dad would be like, "Shut that thing up out there!" You yeah, know? it's just it's annoying. Yeah. You know, it's a dog. Yeah, he never thought, "Oh, this is supposed to be inside with us." Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? that's how I grew up. Yeah, yeah. So this is the first indoor dog we ever, or indoor pet we've, I've ever mm-hmm. had. I had a good joke that I used to do. It's on my making that fudge album about dogs, about the difference of dogs growing up versus dogs now, and I love that joke. But it, it all of a sudden. It just hit a place where that joke would not go well anymore. Like yeah. people were not into that anymore. Yeah, there was it too I, much into. Well, it was a longer bit of just about uh, how you know how we raise dogs versus how people raise dogs now. Yeah, and it just was funny to people because they, I feel like they still remembered the old time versus the new time. But now I feel like we're too much into the new time where it seems like I was abusing my dog. Yeah, but, but I was just you know. Treating it like a dog. Yeah. Uh-huh. I have a little quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I have a quick joke to make now about it, but it's just a quick. Oh, yeah. I don't do mine anymore yeah. anyway. What's the longest you ever owned one pet? Do you have like a dog for like a long time? Uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah. We had a, a dog named Noah. That was a schnauzer. That's probably one I remember the most. Uh, and then. Yeah, we and we had a ton of pets. My, my dad, we had a spider, a snake, a tra- I mean a tarantula. You wake up, dad would just have it laying on your chest. Mm. Oh, uh, I think it froze to death because the heat broke. And that we've had like crazy, uh, a lot of birds. Abigail, Ab- Abigail's the big pet, like the overly pet stuff. It gets she, bring home, find animals. She found one of our cats. Yeah, that's one of our cats. Yeah, from yeah, her. yeah. So. Uh, but at, like we had a bird that uh, one got flew into a mouse trap, the sticky thing, oh, and so they no. had to shave half of it off. <laughs> oh, Another one flew into a frying pan. Oh gosh! I think lived, but uh, yeah, flew into a frying pan. Just oh, all gosh. we had a fish jump out of the aquarium once, and it got all the way out, and uh, and so we got there the next morning. It's just dead on Suffocated. the floor. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And then, um, it sounds like all your pets were killing themselves. It does. Suicide. Yeah. 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 (laughs) I'm ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a fish jumping out of the aquarium. I mean, that's like, what's the fish thinks going to happen here? I mean, you gotta think dignified death is a very, it's a strictly human thing. Every other death on earth is <laughs> tragic. Yeah, where were you looking for that? <laughs> really searching I'll for that. I'll look it off into kind of a gaze yeah. off into the... Think about every life on earth, most of them end horrifically, except for uh, humans, you know, yeah. most of the time. Yeah. So, well, nowadays, I think a lot less know. for dogs. Yeah. But even I mean, still... It's, but I bet a lot of animals, like, if you're like, how do they die? I bet it's... They're not every animal is getting murdered. I think they're. I think it gets to a certain age where it can't defend itself anymore, and it just gets it dies tragically somehow. Most of them. Uh, you know, a bird out in the wild. Bird falls down from the sky. You know, something like that. Yeah, but it's then it would just have died. Yeah, but that's like a tragic death to fall out yeah. of the sky and die. Right? Yeah, but well, it's just their life. I mean, yeah. you, if you walked and, and but, died and had a heart attack, and just fell on the ground. That's the same as a bird. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It probably died before it hit the ground. Maybe. Yeah. We hope, we got to hope so, right? <laughs> I'm just, I said that to say, don't feel too bad about these oh, pets yeah. dying. Didn't well, you know, I, mean, I just think them... like he had two birds almost fly to their death. I mean, apparently yeah. they lived and they were probably like, dang. Yeah. But the, uh, the goldfish jumps out. Mm-hmm. I had a pet 
frog for a little while that I, you know, I caught a bunch of tadpoles and it, it came, it turned into a frog and it jumped out and I found it under like the rug in the kitchen. It was all smushed up and like hard by this point. Like we lost it for a long time yeah. and you find it uh, just like a real mm -hmm. hard. Uh -huh. Yeah. Do you have a bird that the dog swallowed? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't remember this. I don't know if I would like, I, I might've moved or something uh -huh. and Derek and Abigail would have. But uh, we had a dog that, yeah, we got a dog. We had a dog named Oreo that my dad just got. They were giving away at Walmart, <laughs> and so my dad just comes home with this dog, and then uh, it's a great name though. Yeah, for it a was dog. a good name. And yeah. then uh, so then Oreo, and like I guess swallowed this bird, and then Derek grabbed it, and like when it picked it up, like kind of gave it the Heimlich and it spit the bird <laughs> wow. out. So that was the other bird, bird. was still wow. alive. Yeah, that's why your birds are committing suicide <laughs> because they're like it's either that or the dog's gonna eat me. Yeah, I think the animals were. It's a tough time. Yeah, and the bird gets the household. If yeah, you showed up. It's a lot. I've been over there yeah. sometimes. I, yeah, I get it. Yeah, birds the one pet I don't fully understand. Somebody's got a bird for a pet. I don't. I I, I don't understand what you get out of it because I feel like there's very little. I don't know, physical touch between the two of them. I don't even know if a bird can bond with a human being. I don't know if they can. My, yeah, my buddy uh, used to, his, his, they had a, they had parrots. And I mean, it's like, you know, I, yeah, I, I, I might, I don't want to say so much because I, uh, I want to try to do, cause I've been trying to do a pet chuck. I don't think I'm going to do it this hour, but, but I mean, so by the time I do it, but it doesn't matter. Uh, but yeah, you go over to his house, and I mean, it sounds like you're in a war zone. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's oh, just yeah. like, ah! <laughs> like, and you're, yeah, yeah, and you're yeah. in like a two bedroom house, yeah. like, <laughs> and it sounds just like a dinosaur's in the room. And it's, you know, I mean, they're, it's stuff's loud. Animals are loud. Yeah. We had a, like a cockatoo or like a cockatiel kind of got to like the little mohawk for yeah. a little while, and it would just go, ah! <laughs> <laughs> just all the time we put, they say some of them can talk so we put it by the phone hoping that it would kind of pick up like hello and stuff like that <laughs> never did it just ah, i think you have to work it. with it i don't think you yeah. can just listen to answer machine well oh. that's yeah i thought every time you pick it up you go hello okay because this hello. is before caller id so you and you like, would hello. go hello and you look at the bird and yeah like it's almost yeah, never yeah. picked up on it never picked up yeah. my neighbor one of the first you remember the first time when you're like a certain age where the first time, like, it was the first time somebody hired, my neighbor had all these birds and they left town and they were like, we'll pay the nine-year-old kid next door to come just like feed the birds. Mm. And the first day I went over there to feed the birds, I opened the cage and they had like this two can and it just flew right out of oh, it. It's just like loose in the house. And mm. I was like, oh no, dude. Uh, yeah. Yeah. this is the first time they're paying me with a I remember they paid me with a $25 Papa John's gift card. <laughs> I remember specifically that's what they gave me. And so uh, know your audience. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 They know how to incentivize me. But the first day I had to call like their adult son who lived across town to come drive to the house and yeah. catch this bird and put it back in. I like that it's. You, uh, they made your parents made you call. As a nine-year-old? My parents weren't involved at all. I walked over to the neighbor's house and I... How did you call? They had like a list of emergency numbers yeah. on the fridge or something. Yeah. I had to call them. To tell them. I like that the brother lived across town and he couldn't... Or the son and he couldn't just come over. Well, they figured it's easier. We'll pay this guy $25. That's barely enough for one pizza from Papa Joe's. Yeah. Just yeah. have him walk over next door. They still pay you? They did pay me. They were nice about it. <laughs> well, yeah, it's nice to have like let a kid give some responsibility. Sure, sure. But yeah. the brother was like, "Do not pay this guy." Yeah, yeah I remember yeah. he showed up. He was like, "Oh God!" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It like flew across. It's it's a big problem when there's a toucan loose in your house. Yeah. You know, at least you were smart enough to shut the door that goes outside. That's true. I made sure of that before I did anything. I don't even think I was supposed to open the cage. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> oh, like, yeah, because you just slide. I think you thing. can just feed them yeah. through it or something. I don't know. I opened yeah. it and it took advantage. Well, that shows that bird wanted out of there. Yeah. But they all want out they of there. Are, yeah. yeah. They'd all leave you if get you their, opened up. You get their wings clipped. That's what you always do to them to keep them oh. from flying away. But is that frowned upon? I, Probably. I, I would think so. Mm -hmm. I would think having them at all would be frowned upon, but. Uh, yeah, we had one, I think my mom opened the door to clean it and it flew away when I was like real little pet bird. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> and it flew out the, it's like Aunt B, uh, Mayberry and Andy Griffith show. 
Aunt B had a, I think she had a bird. Oh, I don't, I don't remember know. that episode. I think and I've seen it. so many episodes. I think, yeah. I remember Opie had some birds that Andy made him let go. So your mom had like a window open or a door yeah. open? Yeah. No, I think that Andy Griffith has an episode okay. where Aunt B, yeah, it's not Aunt B's birds, but Aunt B was cleaning clean the cage and the bird flies out the window. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Looks what a like great show. The Birdman. Yeah. 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 Your day is full of to-dos, responsibilities, and balancing work with spending quality time with loved ones while finding time for yourself. With everything you have on your plate, earning your degree online seems impossible. But at Grand Canyon University, they specialize in helping you fit your bachelor's, master's, or uh, doctoral degree into your busy day. GCU is an affordable private Christian university based in uh, beautiful Phoenix, Arizona. I've been there a bunch. Offering 330 academic programs with over 270 available online as of June 2023. From scholarships to academic support, your GCU graduation team, led by your own university counselor, provides you with the personal support you need. GCU's online program gives you freedom to earn your degree in the time you can from wherever you are. Your personalized plan and team can help you achieve your goals. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University, private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Have you ever, uh, you ever bought a pet that you regretted and like this was a mistake, and now I'm stuck with this? Pet? Everyone. So, well, what have you owned? <laughs> well, said everyone. <laughs> well, uh, not long ago. A- uh, uh, a couple of years ago, before we had kids, a cat wandered up in our backyard and I kept trying to get it to go away. Yeah. I looked up ways to get cats to go away and it never would go away. And then my mom came up for a visit. They started, her and her friends started petting the cat. They were like, oh, it's such a beautiful cat. He loves your house. So me and Hannah, we were like, you know what? We're going to adopt the cat. So we went, we went to Pet Smart or whatever, and we bought uh, some cat litter and some food. And we were like, oh, we were like, we're cat owners now. And the cat came in, we were petting it. And then the next day, uh, it jumped up, knocked over all my potted plants, broke them all over the floor, everywhere. And then I let the cat out and then it killed a bird and ate the bird all but one foot. And it ate, just completely ate the bird, my birds that I feed. And so I loaded it up in a cage and I took it to my dad. It it didn't even bring the bird to the front door, which is what they usually do. No, it ate it on, we fed it. Yeah. It ate all the food and then it went out, killed a bird and I I caught it with just a foot hanging out of its mouth. Did you let it finish the foot? No, I just, I was like, I was so mad. I don't, why are you mad about That's what cats do though. But I'm feeding the birds. I like the birds. It felt like I set the birds up. Yeah. I betrayed their trust. Now they know. You think of the birds as pets. Well, I like them. I like to see them. It goes out and stands in the- Me and Joe Zimmerman appreciate birds. This was like during COVID? Yes. He has an owl on his hat. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's an owl. Yeah, yeah, no, that's crazy. But bird um, cats catch mice. Yeah, but they they also kill birds. You also collect mice, though. Yeah, well, <laughs> I I had m- mice, you know, at one point in my life. Yeah, I'm not a mice guy. I got now. a mice farm now. <laughs> you had a lot of mice, I believe. Well, it started with two, but they uh, they get at <laughs> they it. breed. Yeah. yeah, they get after it. They dude. get at it. <laughs> I, yeah, we had a snake. We had a red tail boa, and you had and you we'd have to feed it mice and. Put live or there. frozen? Yeah. We do it live. Do frozen mm. ones. That's yeah. fun to watch. It is yeah. fun to watch. You put it in there and you're, you know, it gives him some stimulant like he's got a, but I mean, he would like the snakes. I remember because the mouse could, so, I mean, there's sometimes we'd see that mouse. It'd be, I mean, they just walk up and be smelling the mouth of the snake. Oh, like yeah. just being like, well, oh, what's this? Oblivious. Oblivious. And then some would get behind a towel and be like, oh. And then, so there's the old towel in there. And so then my dad had to reach in once to move the towel and the snake Whoa, struck his hand, really? but just like hit it and kind of came back. And I remember one time looking, trying to look under the towel to see where the mouse was. And it just struck it. It saw my movement and thought I was something. Uh, yeah, it was, I, yeah, I really, you know, when we got that snake, I was very excited about having this snake. Uh, and then it's like, yeah, I don't think I don't know that a snake. <laughs> Terrified of snakes. Yeah. I can't yeah. handle it. Mm-hmm. We had, I had a hamster that I named Skunky. 
when I was young and I used to love that hamster. Then I remember I came back from school one day and my mom said that Skunky died. And I found out years later that my mom fed Skunky to my brother Snake, Slither. Because it was like old and dying. And she's like, well, this will save me a trip to the pet store to get mm. an actual. So I just fed the hamster wow. to wow. the snake. It's uh, kind of cold. That is. Well, it was about to die things. anyway, but it's like, mm. it's kind of an economical move on my, my mom's part. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Saving um, money. I saving love money. that your mom just was like, it's about to die. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was old and it was, it was about time. Right. But that snake, <laughs> that snake got out of the cage and the dog ate the snake wow uh, so it was like a real yeah sort of real circle of maybe, the going dog. On. maybe the dog loves skunky maybe. yeah it's yeah. a a message what kind <laughs> yeah. of snake was it it was a ball python and it got out of my brother's cage and we looked forever and couldn't find it yeah and, and we just kind of wrote it off i guess the snake's gone right i got out of the cage and it was gone and then the dog threw it up everywhere you uh, could see that he had eaten the snake man wow. how could you sleep knowing that would be hard to sleep knowing yeah, that, like yeah. the snakes yeah. somewhere. I was on the the different level of the house. My brother lived on the, still. Uh, the in the basement essentially. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I guess it it didn't bother me at the time, but maybe I should have been a little more weird. I can't believe your parents weren't just freaking out. They might have been, but a ball python's not poisonous. It doesn't really bite. It just kind of wraps itself around you. Yeah, your yeah. throat. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> you can deal with that. But it was like yeah. it was like this big. No, I know, was, but yeah. still, the stars still just know. I agree with you. Cause they, I mean, they could hang out like above a door frame. Oh, they could, have, and then yeah. just drop. Just, I mean, <laughs> I had a snake the other day. I lifted my garage door, and there was a little snake there. And then it ran. Well, it slithered into my garage, and I freaked out. I was able to get a picture, and I sent it to Jesse Rothacker, and he yeah. was able to tell me that it was a garter snake and that it was fine. Mm-hmm. So it, it eased my mind a little bit. But I never found it. I don't yeah. know. Well, it probably got back out. I hope so. Yeah. We used to catch snakes all the time as kids. My dad would take us out. I remember walking through will the wilderness pillowcases, just trying to catch them. Yeah. I don't even, I don't remember. We probably wouldn't bring them back. Yeah. We, for what purpose? You just want to catch them like you catch fish yeah. just to like have it. And then you, then you let it go. Yeah. I think it'd be fun to go. I, I, yeah, I've always liked snakes a lot, but it's, yeah, as I've gotten older, it's like, you're like, I don't want one as a pet anymore, you have but, to I, deal with it. but I do. And I, 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 the snakes, I put new, I, when I was a kid, I knew everything. All I did was read snake books. Wow. I loved it. Does Harper still have a, was it a chowchilla or what was it she what? had? Uh, what did she have? A guinea pig. A guinea pig. Okay. No. What'd you call it? Isn't there something called a chowchilla? Yeah, I think that's a thing in Mexico yeah. that no one can find. <laughs> oh, the chupa, chupacabra? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> chow chow. That sounds like, like a chow like the dog. Chow chow. Yeah. I'm telling right, my grandma I'll try to order at a Mexican <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> get a quesadilla and uh, some jalapeno. We have uh, Sonny's. Uh, yeah, Sonny's not here now. And then uh, she had a fish too, Twinkle. I thought it was called Twinkle, and I think she called it because she was real little something else but i thought she was, yeah yeah or yeah i forget what it was but uh that fish we laura went to clean the bowl one day and we moved it over and then you go back and she put it in like a cup and then we go back and then the fish is gone we don't we still don't know where that fish wow. is at. Wow. and there's a you know we have a air conditioning vent was right there so you're like <laughs> maybe it went down there but we stuck our hand way down in there yeah it's just crazy to be like this little just a little fish. You're like, I don't know where that fish. Could a Holly have grabbed it real fast? We, I mean, we thought maybe, I and mean, it was just such some, but I don't. It was all at the. We were all just standing yeah. right there, and it's like, where's the fish? You know, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Still don't know. Maybe it made its way out. Found mm-hmm. some water somewhere. Maybe. Mm-hmm. So dogs are the most popular pet. Cats are obviously second. Third, I read two different things. One place I read, this is in America. It's goldfish or freshwater fish and the other place i read it's ferrets it's mm. the third most popular Ugh. that's Pet in america yeah i don't oh yeah More i remember fish? thinking i remember thinking you wanted a i wanted a ferret a ferret a was ferret's... such a cool pet at one point yeah but they stink I yeah think. yeah hmm. i remember the- theo vaughn called a ferret the limousine of rats yeah. it's like one of the funniest things i've ever that's heard that's funny. all i think yeah. about now yeah, that is very Yeah, funny. they were really cool. I remember like there was some movie that I was watching and at the beginning of the movie they had they were having like these animal fights and they had a ferret versus a snake or something and everybody would say that a ferret could kill a snake, but 
you know, in the wild, mm -hmm. not in a cage. Yeah. Wild ferrets. Like a ferret, like not in a cage, like outside. Uh, a ferret or. or honey just, badger. No, there's something else that they would fight uh, king cobras. Oh, yeah. Uh, what was Ricky Ticky Tavi? <laughs> huh? <laughs> what was Ricky Ticky Tavi? I don't know, I don't know who you're that talking is. about. Yeah. I'm laughing because that's like a cartoon from the 60s that I would yeah. only. Yeah. Can you Google Ricky Ticky Tommy? <laughs> yeah. It's cracking you up, though. That's like you're, it's the opposite of the noise that we can't hear because <laughs> yeah. of our age. Yeah. You're doing the exact Oh, uh, a mongoose. A mongoose. Boom. Yeah. It's a short story, 1894 <laughs> short story collection. Wow. <laughs> about adventures of a valiant young Indian gray mongoose. It has often been anthologized. Hey, we got there. Maybe it was a mongoose, but we always thought that it was a ferret that could kill a, a snake. No, mo it was a mongoose was the, the the big one that could fight a snake. Well, anyway, they made it a cartoon years later. You remember that cartoon? Oh, the Ricky Tikki Tavi from 1965. Yeah, there you go. In the okay. Soviet Union. Well, I was, I was into Soviet stuff back there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was before the Cold War. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> before we were out of it. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, he used to go to Russia all the time. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Because things really got weird between us when I was about in seventh grade. <laughs> so last year, Americans spent. 137 billion dollars on their pets. Jeez. Up 10% just from the year before. They say wow. pets are the new kids and mm -hmm. plants are the new pets. That's what people say. <laughs> Who says that? That's an expression now. <laughs> not an expression, but just because people are not having a lot of kids. Like we're not uh, even really having right. enough kids to like replenish. Yeah. Yeah. The so, replacement rate. Yeah. yeah. So everybody, you know, cause everybody has pets. Like I was in Chattanooga one time, which I'll be going there on Friday, but I was in uh -huh. Chattanooga and they have a dog park. Um, and it's just like, it really is like young people like they would be out with their kids. Right. Yeah. But they're out with their dogs at brunch, playing the music real loud. The dogs probably hate it. But <laughs> Well, yeah. Pets are getting where you're, uh, it's just uh yeah it's a person in your house right yeah yeah the relationship with it's uh, yeah i think it's uh it's nice people will be marrying their dogs soon how what a soon <laughs> yeah <laughs> five, years. <laughs> five years five is years that is soon yeah yeah mm -hmm. you think they're gonna you want to bet you want to bet on this 20 I don't, I don't gamble but i'll <laughs> i'll take a friendly bet with you yeah. Well, that's what so that is gambling. That's but, well, with yeah. no money though, we'll just twenty bucks. Yeah. We'll just make. So it. you gamble, you just don't ever do money. I'll, I'll. You gamble, I'll, you just don't ever have any stakes. I'll do a twenty dollar Papa John's gift card. There you go. All <laughs> okay. right, let's do that. You got to buy whoever, whoever. Within five years, years. Dusty, well, do you really think we'll be here in five years? Uh, well, I think twenty thirty is where it's going to get real wild. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we got a few years yeah. left. Yeah. yeah. We got seven. seven. Years of fun. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean it's already it's crazy if it's <laughs> well, not wild now. Well, what? How do we know? Um, like, does someone just have to marry their dog? Or I think there has to be a sanctioned like uh, a conversation. The conversation has to be about should should people be allowed to marry their pets? It can't be. I'm sure you could find someone right now that has tried yes, to marry their dog. Yes. Right. But if there's like a conversation of people being like, you want to say pets, animals? Just say we should say animals to make it more. I think it's dog specific. If it's going to be an wow. animal, it's going to be a dog. If anybody, or I maybe thought, a cat. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I think. What? Yeah, I thought you would be more open to for this bet. You're so confident. Yeah, I think it's going to be no, dogs. Let's keep it dogs. Yeah. I mean, I agree with you because I've heard you talk about. I don't know if they marry them. They might try to say they're their kid. Yes. And like be on their insurance or they're like that kind of thing. Yeah, I agree. That's what it's going to be. Yeah. They're going to have like a code, like yeah. rights like that. They, I mean, I agree that we'll go to that place too, but I do think that, I mean, I'm going to stick with the Mariana dog. Okay. 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 I mean, I know you're not a big dog fan. I do agree with you that we now treat our dogs like kids. And, and I mean, I'm guilty of that, but I also think I treat my daughter like a kid. So yeah, <laughs> I can do both. Well, it's a, yeah, it's, it's still, it's still different. I mean, even if you treat your you it is your, different. You treat your you you get it, it's like it, it's a lot of responsibility. You got to have a dog and all this. But when your dog dies, it's a dog on. and you move on pretty quickly. Like, yeah, you know. I opened for John Lovitz a few times. Very nice guy. He I always liked him a lot. And uh, one one weekend I was working with him, and every night we would go out 
uh, to a sushi restaurant and it would be me, John Lovitz, uh, the manager of the club and John Lovett's dog and John Lovett's and his dog would sit on one side of the booth <laughs> and me and the manager would sit on the other side and John Lovett's would order his dog a, a bowl of chicken, uh, which it's, you know, it's fine. Mm -hmm. It's great. I'm not. What right kind of restaurant are you in? It was a sushi restaurant mm -hmm. and I wasn't, I'm not mad at John Lovett's for doing it. I mean, he loved his dog, but I just always thought it was really funny just to for one thing, just to be sitting across the table it from John sitting. Lovitz was fun to me. <laughs> yeah. But John, he had his dog there, and uh, yeah. and uh, it was yeah, man. I, yeah, I had to take his dog out to use the bathroom when I opened for him. Oh yeah, while he was on stage. Yeah, yeah, it was just me and the dog in the green room. <laughs> <laughs> wild. I, do, I do that for Angela. Really, I have to hold Angela's dog. In, for her closer and then when she says thank you good night i put the dog around and the dog runs out on stage oh she brings the dog off stage yeah oh, that's cool there's yeah i i think about uh getting a tour dog like yeah. having a dog well, i mean we're just out on the road so much that you're like it'd be fun to have a little could you have one on the bus uh yeah Oh yeah, yeah. You could, could bring Holly. Holly came right? one time with yeah, us. Yeah, Holly came. Yeah, yeah. I actually should try to do that one time and just be like, if I see if I really want it, yeah. and just be like, I'm gonna bring Holly with me this week, and then you know, we'll just see what she does. Uh, you know, but I, I, it's always the there's a I, I like the idea of it. I have a little problem with that. I feel like there's an arrogance to it that's like, you know, it's like you know, people are working, and you're like, yeah. But people do like dogs running, you know, yeah. but it, but there's something that feels like, who do I think I am that I can bring, I could do whatever I want, you know, there's something about that. I get that. I agree. But, it, it, but then there is like, it'd be fun. It's fun just to have a dog. It's fun to just be like, you know, everybody on the tour is like, yeah, we like. I do think you could bring your dog if you want, but I'm also, yeah, I mean, yeah, you could definitely bring your dog if you want, but I... If I were like on tour with somebody and they brought their dog, I'd be like, oh man, I wish the dog was not here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> but if you, I mean, it is your tour, right? So if you want to bring a dog, yeah. you're definitely welcome to bring a dog. Yeah. And if I were on the, I would not say, ah, can't believe you brought this dog. But in my head, I would always be like, I wish this dog was not here. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'd want to bring a dog and then not have to do anything. It's right. like, I want the dog. I want just the positives of the dog <laughs> where it's like the dog could sit in my lap. It could, you know, lay in your bed. I want to walk with you or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. You need the dog and a person to tend to the mm -hmm. dog. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah. Chase. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dusty, you bring an owl on the road. Yeah. Or something like Lands that. on my arm. Yeah. I let it go at night. I feel like you would get on YouTube bus and you go, there is a snake somewhere on this <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, all right. Good night, everybody. Yeah. I think there's something different about a dog. There's something. Human beings' relationship with a dog, is some, it's different. It's they're yeah, happy, they're, always happy to see it. Yes. And it's it's that kind of thing that when you see a dog, they're always in a great mood to see you. They're very excited. They're very affectionate. It's the same way I understand talking with kids. Like, I thought about it. Like, after SNL, I came home and – uh I took uh, Harper and her cousins. We went to, did I tell, I might have said mm. this. We went to go, I said, let's go eat fast food. We're going to pick, everybody picks their, the the what's the most perfect meal you can pick. So oh. it was like, we all talked, so we, they were, you know, they got a firehouse, uh, like Harper and them love firehouse up. So it was like firehouse subs, McDonald's fries, and oh, a Sonic Blast. Yeah. And then I... Uh, I'd love to do this with you at some point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. It's, and then, uh, well, we could do it. Yeah. We should have a day to do it. You go pick, you just get, you get piecemeal. your... Piecemeal. You yeah. get piecemeal and go, I'm going to get what I like the best of. And then uh, I forget my nephew, like Maya and Zach, and they, like, it was like them three. I, 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 I'm blanking on what I even got. I got... Uh, I was at McD I went to McDonald's. I mean, mine's like I'm probably gonna go to McDonald's, and then I think I got a Sonic Blast. I would have done a Dairy Queen. There's not really a Dairy Queen around here, uh, but I think I got a Sonic. Yeah, I got a Sonic Blast, and then I got fries, and maybe I forget something else. Uh, but yeah, so we did that. But what I enjoyed, and I think it's the same mentality of with the dog, is like when we were riding together, it was like we did not talk about Saturday Night Live. Like yeah. it's because it's kids. Right. And then right. you're talking about like what the food is. You know, and I think yeah. a dog feels like that 
and someone comes home and it's like the, there's no real world i mean obviously it's a dog but like yeah. you're there's like not a real world yeah. thing it's like if your dog has a problem it's like you got to deal with that problem with that dog that dog's happy to see it lays on you just dog's not asking uh, you questions yeah. yeah yeah not telling you what's been going on mm. with it you ever heard of gk chesterton is an old author I have heard of that. Yeah, I don't know like, how, he, but just I have like He wrote Ricky Teeny Tommy, I some think. Christian. <laughs> 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 he said, he wrote this essay called On Dogs, and at one point in it, he's like looking at his dog in front of the fire and reflecting on it, and he says, man ought to have six legs. I was just, he's like, th those other four legs are like a part of us mm. in a way that it's just not the case for other animals. The, the scientific reason we, of you know, we created dogs out of wolves. Like, like 10,000 years ago? Yeah, like a long time ago. And we, mm. we evolved together. Mm -hmm. Dogs and humans do have like a special relationship. Yeah. And I like our cats, but I do think there's something, the dog is like something special, you know? Oh, yeah. I learned from the Missouri part two episode. I didn't, I never got to share this fact, but I'll share it now that the man's best friend line came from a trial in Missouri where a man's dog was shot by a neighbor. And the neighbor said he was like, he thought it was like a wolf or a, I mean, a coyote or something that was trying to kill his livestock, shot and killed it. He sued, they went to trial and the guy got on stand and shared this kind of poetic story about how much his dog meant to him and enough to make the jury like kind of get on his side. And I think the local paper or something labeled it as this man's best friend. Wow. And that's how that phrase. Mm. Yeah, I like that. Come. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, I do like dogs. And I, you know, when you talk about that, like a dog out in, in uh, out on a farm and all that sort of stuff, I mean, and by the fire, I mean, yeah. like, and then the dog not giving you any, like, just being happy to see you. I mean, that all sounds great. I mean, mm. I love that. But I just feel like our lives are in such a way now to where it's like, you know, you, you live in the it's suburbs, busy. you have a dog, yeah. and it's like, anytime you want to go out of town, you got to figure out some dog situation yeah yeah it's a lot yeah. i mean I, I always think for younger people a lot of young people have dogs i think that's a huge mistake yeah people in their 20s and you have a dog is it's uh takes over your life man. it takes over your life and you uh it's it's and it's a worry and a hassle and i and you like you like the idea of the dog and all this but it's just it's you, you know you, you really put that burden on somebody in your family mm -hmm. uh you know, not always, but like, you know, but it's, it's just a lot, a you know, a dog is a lot. And, you know, when you're young, you're, you're kind of running around you want to be out, you mm -hmm. want to be doing stuff. You don't think that can help you mature though, before you have kids? Nah. Uh. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no. Sorry. <laughs> nah. nah. Well, I just say, I, I knew some people like back when I was drinking that, that, you know, they would have dogs and they would have to. I knew a girl specifically, she had like this hunting dog. It was a very nice dog, but she would keep it either in her bedroom or in a cage and she would go to work and then she would go to happy hour somewhere and half the time she'd come home drunk. The dog's been in the cage all day or in the bedroom. Yeah. Her bedroom's destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, it's not fair to the dog. Yeah. Know? It's like- Especially a hunting dog. Yeah. yeah. You think you're, it's a, it's actually, yeah, you could argue it's, uh, you know- animal abuse selfish <laughs> yes. no it's selfish more <laughs> yeah. than but it's you but i'm look there's going to be people that are great with dogs yeah and yeah. so yes there is a i think there is a level of maturity mm -hmm. that you could have because there is a lot of people with dogs but I, I i just think it depends on how busy your life is what kind of situation you're in like yeah. i mean i was in new york and you would comics would have dogs and you're like you know like i gotta go just the weight of their you know we're all hanging out and it's like i gotta go let my dog out and you're like that energy is, mm -hmm. you're just, you know, you're kind of like, ah, I don't, you know, now you just, and then they leave and then we end up hanging out longer and it's like, well, they had to go let it die. And then you're like, why do you have a dog? Or they never had a dog and they're just trying to get away. Yeah. Maybe. I could. It's a could good be. excuse. It is a good excuse. My buddy used to have a, I lived on Folly Beach for a while. My buddy used to have like this Great Dane and it was really fun. We would get on like a longboard skateboard and like hold the leash of the dog and the dog could pull us down the street oh, on the fun. skateboard. That, that was fun. a lot of fun. Yeah. 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 But it's like, it wasn't my dog. Right. So it's like, I got to do that and then go, you know, you take care of the dog. Yeah. You got to like, you know, yeah. Are they, Holly doesn't lay on, she won't like, she likes to lay near you and be around you and all that. She won't lay on you or anything. There's nothing, 
you know, she doesn't have that kind of vibe, but she wants to be around all the time. You know, they, I, I looked this up. Cats don't, cats don't even know. Cats sort of think that their owners are just big cats. Mm -hmm. They don't even recognize there's something different from them. So they just treat you like a, like a big cat that kind of feeds them. Oh. You know, but a dog clearly like a dog recognizes this yeah. is something other than me. Yeah. It knows. It's what GK Chesterton said. He said, whatever it means to be a human being is imprinted inside a dog in a more than you could ever put into yeah. words. Something yeah. about that. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice. You know, Thanks, yeah, man. you like it. You got fired you up. I did, man. Yeah. 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 Now you got like 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 good writing. Now on your birthday, you're going to go home to your two dumb cats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like the cats. They think like you're a cat. Cats. cats are, it's the, it's no responsibility in a way. Or I mean, a there's a less. little, but a lot less. It's the litter box is a whole thing. Yeah. It can take over the house, but yeah, I'm not worried about them at home right now. No. I don't have to rush home to let them out. Yeah. You know, they're just like probably wrestling with each other or just waiting on me to feed them. That's pretty much yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Well, I was going to list some celebrities that have exotic pets, but we're running out of time. But Leonardo DiCaprio has a, a tortoise that's 23 years old right now, but it'll live, could live up to a hundred. Wow. So somebody's getting that, that tortoise. Yeah. That's cool. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's, but it's, Yeah. <laughs> and they say they never stop growing, right? As long as they live, they never stop oh, growing. Yeah, I mean, in winter to Australia, they, I mean, you mean a tortoise, it's like they're like 190 some, you know. Yeah. There's a tortoise, it might have been the one, there was one that just died that was like from, with Darwin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Imagine um, that, like you get that and then you're just, you know, you're, I mean, you're, you're, you're the, throwing four generations of a burden of this tortoise that's like... Where is this dumb turtle from? And it's like, and it's like, I didn't want a turtle. You're like, well, you remember your ancestors that came over on boats? Mm -hmm. They got one, and now we, and now you got it in a Honda Civic because this, because <laughs> this tortoise, because you're, oh yeah, you're like, why do they got this deckum tortoise? A couple more Selma Hayek. 190. Why was 200 years ago? Uh, 200 years ago. Eight uh, was 18. 1823. 1823. Imagine just. Roughly, if they live uh, that long, you get 1823. You could have someone from 1823, and you have his tortoise. That that turtle lived through the Civil War. It was it was. I mean, it was 40 when the Civil War happened. <laughs> yeah. yeah, too it, old to fight. It was too old too to fight. The war. <laughs> Don't I mean? Can you imagine yeah, that? If you got it, if you got a I think they live to it. I'm saying all this. And, yeah, but imagine but being 110 and World War yeah. II starts up and you're like, oh, geez. <laughs> and then, you know, and you're, yeah, this tortoise lives and then now you're living like you live now and you have a tortoise from your so removed family member yeah. uh, that you're like having to like, yeah, feed it lettuce and it's like, what are y'all doing, everybody? You know, and you're like, oh, that's a thing to pass down. Well, Selma Hayek has an owl that lives in the house. <laughs> All right. Lands on her head sometimes at night. Wow. Yeah. Well, that seems scary. That'll yeah. kill people. Yeah. And Mike Tyson had a tiger that ripped a woman's arm off. Uh, wow. He paid her $250,000. Worth it. Um, I don't know. An arm is tough to lose. Yeah. That's I'm talking yeah. about for him. But <laughs> yeah, 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 for him, for sure. She, she <laughs> yeah, that's a, like, yeah, it's a great deal for him. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> She jumped over his fence oh. and got into the cage. Oh, oh that changes so. everything. Well, yeah. you don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You let that out. You know. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's like. Yeah. She doesn't. I don't even know if you have to give her $250,000. Yeah. He was being nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think there was just, he just did it just to keep it out of the media right. and all that stuff. He told this much later on, like on a podcast or something. Obviously, Michael Jackson had a bunch of, you know, Bubbles the Chimp was yeah. very popular. Elvis had a chimp. Tracy Morgan has octopus. <laughs> well, I like that. <laughs> I don't like an octopus. Trying to think about, but it's in an, that's probably my least favorite animal. Is octopus? It's in an I, aquarium. I, uh, no, I have. Oh yeah, he doesn't hang out with it on the couch. I yeah. know it's in water, but they, they're. I don't like them at all, dude. Why? They're very smart. I don't like that they have beaks. I don't like that you can put them in a jar and they can open the jar. I don't like any From of that. The inside. I don't mm -hmm. like that they can fit through a keyhole. I don't like that at all. That's scary. Yeah, dude. Yeah. 
Mm. So I would never bring one into the house. <laughs> Cause it could get, it could, it, yeah. You'd have to be like Fort Knox. How, how smart would an animal have to be before it becomes uncomfortable that you have one in your house? Like an octopus is like near as close to near human intelligence as we can get. Basically. It's do like you having think a gorilla uh, in your house. Do you think an animal's ever had another animal as a pet? Not that, I mean, have we seen examples of that in nature? There was a couple they thought. Coco the monkey? Yeah. I think it was actually a gorilla, but um, it it had like a, some type of pet for a little What while. kind of pet? I forgot it? it was. It was like a ferret or something. And just kept it around it? Yeah, I think it ended up killing it, but. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, it's tough. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. They don't get it. They don't completely get they it. Don't completely they get, get it. it. They get it as much as you think they're going to get it. Yeah. And then one day they. They sit know, on it. Yeah. He doesn't. Mm. Yeah. Is what it is. Yeah. All right. That's a pretty good spot. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. Uh, All right, everybody. Uh, I forget. I'm in Erie, Pennsylvania, uh, Cleveland this week. Uh, Are you in Cleveland? No. Oh. Are you in Erie? (laughs) No. Uh, Might be somewhere else. It did seem like you're like, oh, I'm going to be there too. I'm just saying those are fun places. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Good. yeah, we, I'm excited. Uh, yeah, all right. So Cleveland, Cleveland, Erie. Uh, so it will be a good time. Mike Vecchione's with me. Nice. Gary Veter, Lachlan Patterson. Mm. And we're having Julian uh, McColl has been hosting the show, which we have. It's really been great. It's uh, it, it like is a fun sets the tone, and it's 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 a nice sets up for the nice evening that. You know, everybody's very funny. Everybody does just trying to have a wonderful, pleasant, give you the most pleasant night we could give you. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, this Saturday, I will be at Studio Theater in Little Rock, Arkansas. Ooh. I think it's the first time I've ever even performed in Arkansas. All right. Oh, wow. The whole state? I think I did maybe a casino in West Memphis, Arkansas. There's once. not a ton of comedy there in Arkansas. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Nice, man. This weekend, I'm going international, baby. I'm going worldwide. I'm going global. I'm going to Edmonton, Alberta, right. at the West Edmonton Wall, the comic strip. I'm there all weekend. I love that. Ticket sales are okay. I've been yeah. there. They're not unbelievable. Like the the club's probably not as pumped as I am, but it looks like all yeah. the shows are going to be good. Yeah, yeah. So I'm very excited about it. That's good. One time I was downtown Edmonton. I went to a place. I think it was called Meat, and I had the <laughs> best brisket I've ever had. Meat? I Me, mean, I think it's what it was called. Meat was written on the side. It might have a, <laughs> a better name, but if you see it, it'll yeah. say meat. The best brisket I've ever yeah, had. It was called Open. It's, <laughs> and, uh, so, it's so good. <laughs> All right. I'll check that out. It's so good. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. look it up. Meat's not a bad name, though. Yeah. I like it. I mean, and it's like <laughs> very clear what they do. Yeah. 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 I, would, I think what we did was uh, that we did each fork full, put a little meat, pickle, a little mustard, and oh. it is so good. Wow. Mm. It was such I'll a check good it place. out. Uh, I'll be in um, Chattanooga this weekend. I think the show is very close to being sold out. I think there's only single seats available. Wow. And then on Saturday, I'll be in Bowling Green at the Sky Pack, mm. which I am, uh, I don't believe I'm close to selling that one out, but it is a much larger theater. Mm. So like 1,600 seats. So I've never done a yeah. show in Bowling Green. Bowling Green's n- not the easiest market. Yeah. It's a... It's, uh... Yeah, I'm not went to school there, and then and but it, Bowling Green's not the easiest market yeah. to. Uh, it, it doesn't like a Chattanooga, like uh, others. It's just not, you know. I've never done a show there at all. Yeah, I don't. I mean, many they, times. But. Yeah, I just don't think they like it's. I'm mean, there. That's a town that's probably. I mean, I was there for Western for my semester. I love Bowling Green. Yeah, but it was the. But I, I just, I don't think it's. It's. I mean, I think it's getting there, but I'm excited about it. Uh, I'm pumped about both shows. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be great. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, we love you. We hope you have a great uh, week. Uh, We're here next week, right? Yep. So we will all see you next week. All right. Bye. Nate Land is produced by Nate Land Productions and by me, Nate Bargetsy. And my wife, Laura, on the Audio Boom platform. Recording and editing for the show is done by Genovations Media. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to catch us next week on the Nate Land Podcast. <laughs>